I want to invite everybody to watch my uh, Netflix special that will be premiering on Netflix platform uh, Tuesday, October 19th. Make sure to thumb it up and do all the deals. Um, share it. Let your friends know. Uh, you guys are always supportive. So just when you get some time, check it out. And thank you if you ever came to see that tour on the road. And, um, and if you didn't, I'm glad you're getting to see it. And I love you. Today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Death. Today's guest is a man who, well, he knows a lot about things I don't know about. I've been dealing with uh, issues that have that he would know about recently. Um, he's one of the most popular and uh, celebrated reptile and animalia men in the world. I'm happy to have him slither through our doors today. It is Mr. Brian Barchek. Set that parking brake and let myself all shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my story. Shine on me, and I will find a song. I will sing it just for you. Yeah, man. So I guess I think my top fears with snakes are, and I don't do people do people come to you suddenly like, well, I feel like I feel like snakes create so much fear in me that right yeah. when I see you, I want to tell you about it. Right. Yeah. You like know, you're the yeah. middleman for. Yeah. Them. You know, and I'm really good at getting people over their fears. Right. You know, like that's one of the things I pride myself on. You know, I mean, every single week we have dozens and dozens of people that come to my reptile zoo that are like, I am terrified, and I'm like. Your pace, but I guarantee you by the time we're done, you're going to be holding snakes. So like, never, never going to happen. Then they're holding like a 12-foot python, oh. you know, by the end. So I'm telling you, when I get you to my place, you're going to be holding a giant snake. I'm telling you. Dang, man. Yeah, Dang. I, just, I don't yeah. know if I want it. You know, I think <laughs> I think snakes, for some reason, create so much fear in me, you know. Uh, why is it that snake is that fear animal? You know, I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, it goes back to probably a bunch of things, right? Biblical, number one. Number two, they, they are, an, an, you either love them or hate them, right? You know yeah. what I mean? And there's that, that thing I always talk about, like, you know, I think Howard Stern once said the thing like, similar where it's like, if you love snakes, you want to talk to me. If you hate snakes, you want to talk to me more. You know what I mean? It's like, they're like, they're just so interesting, right? But for me, I've just loved them my whole life. I mean, like, my first memory as a kid when I was two years old was of a ball python at the zoo, right? And I've just been obsessed with them. Yeah, you know, I was three years old, four years old, out in the woods collecting snakes. And Was and, that yeah. a Rescue 911 episode? Uh, do you remember that Rescue 911 episode? No, no, I didn't watch it, no. Where that snake, I remember as a kid, it was like the scariest one, like a baby was playing with a snake. Oh, crap. And it wasn't like an Indian baby like they do, yeah. you know? Yeah, like they do. It yeah. was like a um, regular, just street, like white baby, you know, local white baby. It was a big, big snake? Huh? It was a big snake? It was, uh, here we go, Rescue 911 Snake Baby YouTube. Oh, gosh. This is what did it for a lot of America. In the small town of <laughs> is this what did Paris, it? Louisiana. Independence Day oh, is a Louisiana. time for celebration. Yeah, this yeah. is my parish. This is the parish I'm from. I didn't even know it happened there. <laughs> oh, come on now. Oh! Hey. Little Terry got bit, man. My oh, God, little Terry bit. got bit. Okay, that's good. Holy Jesus God. Christ, dude. So, I didn't realize that happened in my area till just now. So yeah. I can see now why I remember just sitting there with my mom. And watching that, and I knew it was going to be a rough go. <laughs> well, what they did there is they, they used two different snakes, right? The one snake was a water snake, harmless. The other one was a cotton mouse. So they look real similar yeah. just for the scare factor. So, yeah. 
That's what most media does, though, right? You know, right. The like, media makes it scary. The yeah. Bible made it scary. Well, a snake bit somebody in the first eight pages of the Bible. So right. That's probably. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. I can. yeah. We didn't. We didn't start off well. Yeah. yeah you, we didn't, you guys yeah. didn't start off well. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm here to change everyone's opinion. That's okay. that's my thing. You know. Okay. I, mean? I do, tell you, they're great, man. Do you feel that that's kind of like your purpose, like a little bit of your mission is to? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think so. I think so. I mean, I, I like. Listen, I, there's nothing that makes me happier than someone changing my I had like a 75 year old woman yeah. come in about a year ago and she's like I am terrified of snakes she's like I've been having nightmares about snakes since I was like two years old and she said and I started oh, like good memory yeah yeah exactly right but then she's like so I started like looking online find your videos I she goes I'm starting to watch her videos kind of exposure therapy and then she booked a private tour with me and she says I, you know listen I don't even know if I could touch a snake but I'm coming here for an hour with you and I said let's just take it slow we took about probably 40 minutes just to walk around i'd take snakes out then i'd eventually let her like touch a snake then eventually she held her first snake by the time when she was done she's holding giant snakes and stuff like that and she's actually come back two or three times since because she's like now i love them mm. you know so yeah i think it's, it's something i'm really passionate about and do you uh so you said when you were small y'all had a us uh you ran across a ball python when you were little yeah yeah, I didn't really. It was at the zoo, right? You know, okay. it was at the zoo. It's my first memory. I was a kid. First memory. My mom oh, said wow. I was two years old. I have a crazy memory, right? But uh, literally, I remember that cage. I remember the smell in the air. I remember everything. Like it was like, and, and from that time on, I was just obsessed. You know, I just and no one in my family had snakes. Everyone thought I was crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I loved them, and uh, my mom hated them. She was terrified of them. And uh, finally, when I was 15 years old, after you know whatever, you know, my entire life begging her for snakes, she finally let me get a, a snake, and it turned out it was a Burmese python which is by the way the worst snake you could possibly get as a first snake because they get like 18 foot so like my first uh, snake I was a little baby but the uh, thing ended up getting like 18 foot you know and uh, well, anyways long story short I was like living in my mom's basement at the time I was like 15 worked at a pet shop and were you and, doing uh, drugs or anything at the time or oh yeah yeah, yeah. That, that I don't do drugs now I don't yeah. do drugs now but yeah but it wasn't because of snakes it was just because I was a rock guy you know, right right yeah yeah whatever yeah. I'm just trying to get the whole picture I don't know if it's a guy yeah. like a kind of a nerdy kid down you know, yeah. I don't know if it's a science kid down there doing no, volcanoes, always... doing snakes, or if it's a kid like, uh, you know what I'm saying, who's listening to some Megadeth and some ACDC, yeah. Megadeth, and a little bit of gas, and then yeah. petting something, you know? Yeah, well, you know, I was always pretty good about not messing with the snakes when I was, uh, you know, partying up a little bit. But uh, but don't get me wrong, I had a snake room, and yeah. by the time I was like 17, I had like 200 snakes in my mom's basement. She like didn't know. What? She just wouldn't come downstairs, you know? And you, you have, you know, when you have 10 snakes, what's 12 snakes? What's well, fifteen snakes? You know That's what I mean. More snakes, so yes, yeah, more snakes. But yeah, I ended up having like two hundred snakes. But the oh. thing is, dude, literally, I started breeding snakes. I was seventeen years old. I made like forty grand in my mom's basement when I was seventeen breeding really? snakes. Yeah, so really? I was yeah, so I was able to. And literally... who's buying them? Are you meeting people outdoors? Are you meeting people indoors? <laughs> Where are you? How are you getting rid of these? You're yeah, showing back up. Then. You got a little. Is it in like a briefcase? Like, how are you? Where? How do you even? Where do you even meet anybody? You'd be surprised how many people you. I've done a lot of deals in the Walmart parking lots. There's no doubt about that. But not anymore. (laughs) But uh, when I was, but that was pre-internet. So uh, yeah, there was like reptile shows and like you know like reptile conferences and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've been now. I've been to one of those before, and that was really oh, that was so alarming, dude. That was so (laughs) scary, Uh, and that that the whole thing just really, I I I think about snakes. It's the element of surprise man that was the same thing that happened in my kitchen the other day i get a snake came through and i didn't know he's there like an animal you know a little you know you see a puppy you see a little falcon or something realistic you know it's it's a little bit more like oh look at this you know it's more noticeable maybe it have a bell on its neck but if you see a snake you don't see there's no like they don't whistle there's no like email in advance there's no yeah. information you don't yeah. hear it licking out of a bowl there's no and then it's just there i it's think it's there. um it's like you're playing this game of hide and go seek that you didn't know you were playing yeah and then you fucking lost that's yeah. how i feel yeah. like all of a sudden when i see them yeah i got you well i tell you know listen coming across the snake even i when i come across a snake in the wild i'm looking for him you know i'm out you know i've traveled all over the world right you know i mean i've you know i had a series on discovery channel that, you know for the most venomous snakes on the planet and when i come across them, venom I'm, hunters what was it yeah venom hunters venom exactly hunters, yeah. yeah it was great great Damn. season one almost died several times but that's all right you know they wanted me to like they're like you know hey you know instead of having a nice big snake hook yeah. now she was this little tiny snake hook or you know let's make it as dangerous as possible so oh they uh, want you to die oh they want that's the, the producers best. want the you to die bring your girlfriend bring your sick girlfriend <laughs> 
<laughs> she'll do great. But, uh, but even I, like out in the bush, you know, when I come across a snake, I'm looking for him and I come across a snake and it startles me for a second. Yeah. If it's in my living room, man, I tell you, I literally, when I, again, I was at my mom's basement. Okay. Bought a house when I was 20 years old because I had made enough money. You made that, that bread. And now so you I, got a lady at this point? I just want to yeah, know what kind yeah. of man has these snakes at this point. Well, yeah. Because if I have 200 snakes, dude, I don't know how I'm finding time to uh, pet a lady. <laughs> you know what I'm or to feed a late, you know what I'm saying? You got yeah. two hundred dates every day. Yeah, no, you're right. It's a lot of work. But no, I literally still am with my wife Lori for since we we're like oh, wow. eighteen, nineteen years old. And she wouldn't even come into my mom's basement when I met her because she was so terrified of the snakes. Smart. You mean. And now she's been, you know, running our businesses for, you know, thirty years together. So So she did really the bookkeeper. She no, she's hands on, man. She's she's hardcore. You'd be really. You, I mean, I tell you, you don't want to mess with Lori. Anyone who knows that. I tell you, listen. I I run a lot of different things that are all reptile related, mm-hmm. but she's the boss. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like everyone's terrified of her, but she's a badass. She'll get in with a 18 foot snake like nothing. You know? I mean, my employees are scared to death. Like I'm not getting in there. Things you know, mad, mad today. She'll go get out of my way. She'll get in there. But no, it's like uh, but but so I I moved out when I was 20. Bought a house. Okay, had, so you had, moved out. You got a house. You got the girlfriend. Yeah, girlfriend turned in my wife and had okay. a kid and stuff like that. But I had a few snakes at my mom's house. You and left so them in there? A few because I was still moving into the new house, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, so, dude, that's yeah. fucking really mean. <laughs> it was, right? But <laughs> it turns out one time I was over there, you know, because I still ta- got to take care of them, right? And uh, I accidentally oh. left one cage open. Right, but the downside was that snake got out of the cage and then opened up a bunch of other cages. So my mom calls me at like three in the morning. How do you do that? Like Madagascar? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's like let all your friends out, you know? Oh my but, god! Uh, I didn't yeah. know that. See, that's the thing that I don't understand. Sometimes is how, like, do they know more than we think they know? Oh yeah. Jesus oh, they're God. so much smarter than you think, dude. I mean, most we have snakes Jesus, that literally dude. are like ball trained, and what I mean by that We're is fucked, that. Man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? No, I think it's great. I think every person on the planet should have a pet snake, including you. Let me ask you this, man. Yeah. You touched on it a second ago. People on drugs, being with snakes. Yeah. Should somebody that's high? Because first, of all, two two questions. One, I think I re- I remember. My friend Alex had a snake. He would feed it. We he would feed his snake dog food pieces. Mm. Is that possible? Or was I? High? I mean, you're probably high. high. You're probably high. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Appreciate I'm I'm that. not going to say that it it can't happen. I'm just saying that I've never seen it. Okay. Yeah, because I was I've had this memory my whole life, and then I'm like, I don't know if maybe we're high. So then the okay. second part is, do you think drug induced people should be around snakes? No. And what? Sorry, answer. Uh, no, you, you okay. def, no one talk. You, listen, you know any animal, especially a, a reptile or a mm-hmm. big cat or you know something that could potentially hurt you. And you know, listen, a lot of snakes can't hurt you, but I'm talking a bigger snake. You know, we have a rule that like number one, you can't even go in with a big animal without a second person with you in our place. But uh, and no one can be intoxicated on any level. Okay, say you have to be intoxicated, right? Okay. There's a federal yeah. mandate. Yeah. yeah, you know. And I'm not talking like with the vaccine. I'm talking like federally mandated. You got to be high. Some type of drug. Yeah. What is the best drug to be on around a snake? Probably marijuana, you know, because it chills you out. You know, maybe they sense a little energy thing or something like that. I know a lot of keepers that smoke a lot of reefer. Yeah. Yeah. I f- yeah, I feel like that fits. Now, what is a drug that would, you would not recommend probably being on around a snake? Definitely on? not like mushrooms or LSD. Yeah, that'd be a bad idea. Really? Yeah. I mean, you're barely knowing what's going on. You got some snakes striking at you. You know, you think it's maybe a goblin or something like that. It's not a is idea. a snake more likely to strike at you if you have uh, sunglasses on? Uh, probably not. Some animals would. I would say like lizards, like giant lizards and stuff like that, they get a little freaked out by stuff like that. They're more visual, you know what I mean? Snakes what, aren't as visual. What about skin lotion, like a Vino skin lotion? Like a basic moisturizer. Uh, uh, probably nothing too major, to be honest with you. They, I've never seen anything too agitated by smells and stuff like that. And we get a lot of people in our zoo that handle a lot of stuff, and they, there's all kinds of smells from patchouli oil to, to yeah, you know, Calvin Klein. What but is? I a, will tell you something real quick, not snake yeah. related. If you ever go to like a big cat sanctuary type of thing with lions mm-hmm. and tigers, don't wear, wear a Calvin Klein because they almost all, for some reason, spray Calvin Klein on boxes for enrichment. So they'll throw the box with Calvin Klein in the cage, and then the tiger or lion loves it. They oh. rub all over it and stuff. So it's like now every time they smell Calvin Klein, no. they're thinking, "I can eat that." So oh. don't do that. That's a little little tip. You'll like that tip. When uh. 
How far can a snake see? Depends on the snake. You know, like a king cobra's rear visual, it could probably see a pretty good distance, you know, several, maybe 20, 30 yards, something like that. Uh, pythons don't have a lot of great high sight, you know, probably three, four foot, something like that. Can snakes dance? You know, like you see a lot of those videos, yeah. snakes dancing in other countries and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's more like a combat for males, right? So if you get two male snakes, particular species, they'll do like the kind of stuff like that. But they're not dancing. They're fighting. Okay. Yeah. Is there, do reptiles go through a popularity phase? Like in your lifetime, have yeah. you noticed popularity yeah. phases for certain types of reptiles or anything like that? And what oh kind of creates those? Do you oh my notice? gosh, I tell you, listen, when I, you know, when I was a kid in the, in the late eighties getting into snakes I and mean, you yeah. were like a closet, like snake guy, you didn't tell anyone you kept snakes, right? Now it was almost, the homosexuality of animals really. <laughs> Maybe not quite that bad, but, but, uh, but it was close though. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying, dude? Well, yeah, Look, that I, guy I see, I see has snakes. Yeah, you definitely got looked at as a freak. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. that guy? That guy's a killer or something like that. Yeah. But now it's like, literally, I think there's like 40 million households in America keep snakes. So it's crazy how busy. I mean, it's like every pet shop has them. Um, yeah, they're super popular, you know. So uh, I've, I've just seen a kind of upward trajectory, to be totally honest with oh. you, since the late 80s, early 90s. Um, now it's like so mainstream to keep snakes, you know. I mean, everyone, yeah, like everyone knows somebody that has a snake. Yeah. You've got to know somebody somebody right oh i know a guy right actually you know what we got a question from somebody i do know who has one i'm not gonna lie i am not a fan of theo vaughn never have been never will be but i love brian so here's the question brian what kind of animal should i get to put inside someone's house when they are not home to scare or intimidate them i don't want any death or violence to occur maybe just a lot of fear uh, any advice would be much appreciated. Thank you yeah. so much. And interesting yeah. how he didn't blink once during all of that. That's true. Which yeah. I want to say it's, that's yeah, definitely the, reminds me. The mustache you of, is a little freaky too, to be totally honest with you. But it uh, fits his entire yeah. interior. Yeah, I would of do complete uh, darkness. Listen, heart. I, I would do something like a, a, a like a black racer or blue racer or something fast, right? <sighs> that way, when it, you see it, it's just like. Whoo! You know, the faster yeah. something moves, the more scary it is, right? And you know? you, do they can they go on top of the water even, those? Oh, my gosh, yeah, yeah. I was in uh, South Africa a couple years back, and we, we collected a couple black mambas, right? And we wanted to release them. And so we went down to a, a river. And, R.I.P. And, also. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, black black mambas are, I mean, they're they're wicked. I mean, they're oh, snakes that they, they want, I mean, listen, you know, no snakes are aggressive, but they're defensive. But when you start messing, you muck with a black mamba, it's quick and it's willing to bite you and it's not a good bite. As a matter of fact, I was at the, at the same trip. I was at a venom lab and we did some milking of venom for antivenine. Yes. And uh, just about three weeks later, the guy that I was with got killed by the same place I was no. at. Yeah, yeah, I got bit and died. But uh, so we released the black mambas into this area that had this nice river. And I mean, they just glide on the top of the river. It's absolutely, it's to me, it's stunning and beautiful. This is them right here? Yeah, I mean, they're crazy. And they call them black mamas because the inside of their mouth is black, not because oh, they're a yeah, black snake, right? They're more like a grayish green snake, to be honest right. with you. But they're, you know, they get like nine, 10 foot, super whippy and super willing to bite. And they're, you know, like a Ferrari kind of. Oh, yeah, they're fast. Dude. Or like I a mean, Porsche. They always say, like, you know, hey, I've, I've been messing with venomous since I was 15. And, and they always say, like, the most experienced venomous guy, if you're handling either a mamba or a coastal taipan, you look like you don't know what you're doing. That's how that's how crazy they are. Like even when you know what you're doing, you don't look like you know damn, what you're doing. Damn. Yeah. So even so, at that level, a black mamba, we even you will handle it differently. You will have more fear in you at that point. Never fear. I always say don't fear respect. But I definitely respect a black mamba tremendously, especially if you get out in the you know the African sun. It's like 95 degrees, sunny. They're soaking up the rays. And you got to remember, animals are you know these animals are cold blooded. So when the when it's warm, they're faster because they're higher temperature. And uh, I mean, I, I've had a couple you know, real close encounters with black mambas and coastal taipans in Australia as well. But So is it better to put ice on a snake before you approach it then? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't do it because it's probably not that good for the snake, you know. It's, it's not good to cool them down like that. But the cooler they are, the more mellow. And if you go in the, into Africa during the winter months, which of course are summer months, um, you know, they're, they're chill, you okay. know, because it's cool. Well, here's a question. Let's bring those mambas back up if you don't mind, Spencer. Yeah. Um, the... The yeah now this snake right here what yeah. what is the benefit of having that black mouth inside of its body? It's all about uh, danger, uh, you know, threat. You know, like basically, uh, you know, someone comes up, it's going to open that mouth, it's going to look really dangerous. 
get away from me, don't muck with me. You got to remember, like, snakes don't want to be messed with, and they also don't want to bite you. They don't want to bite you, but they will bite you if, if, if you, you know, get into their space, right? Then wh- who's trying to kill a snake? What are they afraid of? I never met anybody trying to kill a snake or animal. Oh, my gosh. Snakes are, are you know, it, it, listen, it, you know, it, it's, it's all a... a circle of life right i mean you know but i feel like it's a freaking coldest i feel like it, it is a damn u-turn of life for them because i i, I what animals trying to get them oh my gosh so you know from anything from you know like mongoose for instance over in africa they're actually immune to the venom they love killing oh, snakes really? right you know so and then when there's a smaller snake birds will get them uh you know i mean gosh you know africa's just oh a, yeah i've seen a falcon get one yeah or a hawk yeah <laughs> wow yeah, they're, they're yeah good. I didn't think about that. So that's such a predator, too, because you can't even see that coming from the air. That's like yeah. if an airplane came down and got one exactly, of us. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And then when you have, like I said, you have a mongoose or something like that that literally can get bit, and they, it's almost like they get drunk. If you ever you want to go down a rabbit hole, just watch, like, mongooses getting bit by cobras because yeah. they actually, it's like they, they, like, walk around, get drunk, they'll fall over, then they just get right back up and then go back. You know, honey badgers will do the same thing. It's pretty crazy. So when they get bit, they, it, it affects them for a little bit, it yeah, phases just like them, and then they're like back? A, yeah, like almost like it's they're drunk or something for a minute and then they're like all right i'm ready for round two let's go happiness doesn't come easy these days it it can be a perspective change it can be a a mission for some for some it's a natural element for me it's it can be a battle that's why there's a place called better help it's not an actual place but it's a place that's real it's a place where you can go online to get Help from licensed professional therapists. That's right. The service is available to clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. If you think you would like to seek some mental health help, BetterHelp can be that avenue. Visit BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Theo. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and this past weekend, listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Theo. And if you talk with a counselor, don't be afraid to share what you're really feeling. Even if you hate the counselor, tell them that. Just share what's going on. Sometimes we get stuck in these spaces where we don't share what we're really thinking. Because we're afraid of what other people will think. But with counselors, that's not how you do it. You share with what you're really thinking. Do your best. You know, cash back cards are so 2020. You buy this, you buy a thing of Skittles, you get half a cent back. You buy $50 worth of damn corn and you get a, uh, they send you a mitten or something, one mitten. You got to keep high-fiving people with your cold hand to, to keep it warm. The shit has to stop. Well, whether you're a crypto pro or a total beginner, you can finally earn Bitcoin the easy way with the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card from BlockFi. Yep, you can earn unlimited Bitcoin in every qualifying purchase you make. If you're interested in buying Bitcoin but don't know where to start, BlockFi has the world's first Bitcoin rewards card card. So you can earn Bitcoin the easiest way possible with every qualifying purchase. Yep. The BlockFi Rewards Visa Signature Card. That's right. You can earn 1.5% back in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchases. Now's the time to start or ramp up your Bitcoin portfolio. Our listeners can get a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make your first purchase with the credit card when you sign up at BlockFi. Fi.com slash Theo. That's $25 bonus encrypted deposited right into your account. After you make your first purchase, go to B L O C K F I.com slash T H E O. Yep. Not all will be el- eligible. Geographic, regulatory, and underwriting restrictions apply. Fees and terms are subject to change. Additional terms of service at BlockFi.com. BlockFi is a financial technology company. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Start earning Bitcoin back on all your qualifying purchases today. BlockFi.com slash Theo. Do you think it's ironic Australia was a place where they put all the criminal humans, right? Yeah. At one point in time. Yeah. I've long thought that 
God put all the criminal animals over there too, ironically. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's- Are you surprised yeah. that all the criminals of human and animal- It world... is an irony. It, I hadn't thought of it that way, but it is ironic. And it, it is true that most everything in, in Australia wants to kill you, you know? The only <laughs> difference crazy, between right? uh, Australia and Africa is that the animals in Africa kill you and eat you. Whereas the animals in Australia just kill you, you know, Ooh. with the exception of crocodiles. Crocodiles eat you in, Afri in, in Australia as well. And I've been, I've been out there with those guys too. So when you guys are hunting, uh, like, do you go on hunts or what do you go on? Like, do you yeah. go out on a weekend looking like in yeah. your town for snakes? Yeah. Do you pack a lunch in the morning? Like, what do you do when you get out there? Like, and what are you, where are you going? Well, there's not a lot of great stuff in Michigan, to be honest. That's why I'm from the Detroit area. Okay. But when I go out to, to Africa, you know, Asia, uh, you know, whether it's Indonesia or, or wherever I'm going, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're like, we're there just to look for something. Usually I'm filming something, you oh, know. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I love it. Even if I'm not filming, on my days off or something like that, I'm out looking for stuff. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't know. It, you know, I don't take them. I just like catch them, maybe take some pictures, hang out with them for a minute, and then let them loose. As a matter of fact, I love letting snakes loose after I catch them because yeah. I think it's super cool. But uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, listen, some people jump out of planes, some people have fast cars. I like to play with things that might kill me. You know, so it's it's kind of that thing. What scares you then if snakes don't? Everything. Really? Everything but reptiles and, and animals. I mean, I'm not afraid of any animals because I've worked with, you know, again, lions and rhino. You name it. Could you pet a big animal? Oh hell yeah, man! I don't care. I I'm that that's actually I'm broken a little bit to be totally honest with you because I don't fear any animal. Like you know, people are like, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, let's go. You know, like why not? Let's go. Let's check it out. And I'm never thinking like I've listen. I've been doing this my whole life, and I've been around the craziest animals all over the planet. Never once have I been to the hospital yet for an injury. Nothing. Not Damn. even one time, Damn. you know, and, and, and maybe you can call it luck. Maybe you call it what, I don't know what it is, but I don't ever like think of it as scary. Have your children and wife been bit? Uh, not by anything dangerous. But well, my, my wife bit? did get, yeah, of she course. Did. Yeah. Both, but do yeah. you feel some responsibility for that? Not at all. They, I like, they, I like yes, their decisions. My wife does have a pretty good scar from a tiger bite in the leg. <laughs> so that, that was a good Sorry, one. Sorry, but some of these bitches deserve it. Not your lady, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm glad to know Tigers are on our team. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. got a beautiful question that came in yeah. right here from somebody. Oh, he I, looks like a reptile guy to me. He definitely, yeah, he does. Yeah. And I feel like he's sent in a question before. I'm glad this guy's chiming in here. Let's hear it. Yeah, what up, Theo? Uh, this question's for Brian. I'm actually genuinely curious. What's the worst injury uh, you've sustained while messing around with those little critters, those little reptiles and amphibians and snakes. Uh, they look pretty, pretty dangerous. So I'm curious uh, how long you've been hospitalized or what, what the worst injury was. But uh, appreciate you guys, Theo, my dude, gang, gang. Gang, brother, thanks for the question. That's a good yeah. question, Brian. I'm sure you get asked it a lot. Yeah, and I kind of, you know, almost covered it, right, where I've never been hurt, really, right? You know, I, mean, I have a few scars. And I want snakes major. to hear that. Yeah. I want snakes, I want animals it's to hear challenge. that. It's right a challenge. Right here, yeah. yeah. We got a guy who just entered the ring. I'm not saying it's a Royal Rumble, Yeah. but I'm saying it's a Royal Rumble, yeah. dude, that just entered the ring. I'm daring him. Has suffered zero damage points, okay? Yeah, yeah. This guy has, had, has, has all of his hit points, snakes. Yeah. And yeah, I'm telling you what, we, uh, it, it shock, it, 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 honestly, it shocks me. Do you feel like when you start to see that you haven't been damaged, you yeah. haven't had any hit points yet, that you think there is something in certain people's bloods? Do you notice that maybe Native Americans don't get it bit as much, mm -hmm. that blacks don't get bit as much? Who is getting bit? Uh, well, I do think that. You know, I I don't think it's a. Uh, if it's women, it's women. Yeah, yeah. I think no. I think it's. It, I always talk about confidence. Yeah. Right. Like if you can read. So you listen. Everybody ha Like you might have a puppy, and you're like, I know what that puppy wants. I know it wants food. I want. You know, some people have that same mentality with animals at all. Like okay. I can tell when I get in with a a tiger yeah. if it's going to be chill, and I know the like I can tell before it's going to want to attack me when it's going to do it. And same thing with reptiles. I can just oh, I can look at a reptile at a zoo and be like, okay, that needs a little bit more food. It needs, you know, it's that's aggro, that's whatever. You know, so I think that confidence and the ability to read them, and that could be something that's natural. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that you can learn. I mean, you can learn. Like my wife Lori, she wasn't a reptile person. She's learned to really deal with reptiles. 
But, you know, I, I just, I've always been that way. Like, I've always yeah. been able to read, like, every animal. And maybe, oh, yeah. or maybe I'm just lucky. I don't know. Maybe I'm testing fate all the time. But I, I um, it, you know, you give me a challenge, I'm in for it when it comes Is to Is part that. of that it when it comes to being around reptiles? Because it's just, I, I wouldn't think it was crazy if it wasn't something that struck up so much fear. We had a blind lady that was on the podcast one time. Mm -hmm. and we were just talking about all kinds of stuff, what it's like to be blind and different inquiries and blind inquiries and she said the craziest thing we're talking about animals she said the craziest thing is snakes she's like i get nothing from a snake like right. other animals i can hold i can feel i can get yeah. some kind of energy from them yeah. but a snake i just don't get anything from it Interesting. and that's when i knew dog y'all was fucking up bro you know <laughs> yeah. what i'm saying that's when i knew y'all was out there dark <laughs> art and dog Maybe, i don't know so do you think that you get a reading from snakes like yeah. do you think it's a temptation to battle like this 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 thing that's so scary to other people like is there any of that in it for you yeah i think that you know most people that are really into reptiles there's a little bit of like outlandish you know you want to be a little bit of an outlaw like type yeah. of thing i think that you're a little you don't you know, follow the same path as everybody else. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, but, the snake guy was always a crazy guy. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it's kind of cool to be the crazy guy in a way. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But people always are surprised how, like, I may do crazy things, but I'm not that crazy. The snake guy was always a really cool guy, though. Yeah, it, yeah. And like you said, you know, when you earlier on, like, hey, did what do you think about the women? I tell you what, guys with snakes always get the women. Really? What yeah. is it? I don't know. It fascinates him. I don't know if because you're you're a rebel, you know. I don't know what it is, but it seems like all my snake friends are always hooking up with the hottest chicks. Do you feel like uh, a lot of that snakes that snakes know it's you? If you have a snake, do you think a snake knows it's you? You know, that's a tough question, man. I think that we, there's something that's called anthropomorphism, right? When we start, you know, applying our human feelings to an animal, right? You know, people do it with everybody, with their dogs, even they anthropomorphize. Yeah, them. yeah. And people start looking like their animals too. They say yeah. all the time, and sometimes it's true. Yeah, I agree with you there. I so I don't know. You know, I'd like to. There are certainly reptiles that know me. My reptile, you know, lizards and and some other things like that. And you know snakes, they know you. Well, yeah. I mean, literally, I have a rhino iguana that uh, her name is Bella. She'll only come to me. Mm. Like, when I call her, she'll come to me. When I call her, my crew, she won't come to, you know. So she's, you know. And a lot, a lot of my animals act very differently. With snakes, they act different to me as well. But is I wonder sometimes, is that my, like, calmness with them that's making them calm with me? You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know that they read. I just don't know. You can't read that with the snake. And if I sat here and told you I, I did, I think people would think I was kooky. Mm. Do you feel sometimes, though, like there's some kind of connection? Like sometimes I'll see an animal, bro, and I'll be like, dude, there's some piece of me inside of me that's mm. also inside of that animal. Do you feel that with snakes sometimes? Because we're all come out of nature. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all connected, right? You know, but I don't think that I'm like part of a snake or something. I think, uh, but I do think that, you know, we're all kind of interconnected through energies and stuff like that. And um, so I think that that's, that's what I always say, you know, if you have confidence, you have like positive energy, you're less likely to get bit, okay. and less likely to get hurt. You know, it's when you're afraid of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. or even like when you're catching a snake and you know, I had one of my crew out and we were uh, in Florida and, and, and like he wanted to catch this little lizard, you know, how little lizards running around yeah. in Florida all the time. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, let me go catch this. And he gets close and he, get, and he hesitates. Right. Yeah. And then the lizard runs away. And I'm like, you can't hesitate. You know, it's just well, like when you play that guy in a movie, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. yeah, that's me. Yeah, no, it's even like with a crocodile, like if you're going to catch a crocodile, the last, I mean, you know, again, we're in a place called Josini, Africa, and we were, uh, it, actually, it was crazy. I was, I was filming a documentary, and um, we, we hook up with this guy. You know, Josini is the largest uh, population of, of uh, Nile crocodiles in one area in, in South Africa. Can you bring and, that up, Spence? And it's, it's, yeah, Josini. And uh, it's, you know, tons of big wild crocs. And, and so the biologist that had been studying him for over a year was named Mark. Right. Mm -hmm. And so my my fixers for the, the show, like hooked up with this guy and like, hey, we want to catch a croc. We'll do some research, you know, some skewed samples, whatever the case is, toxicology stuff. And uh, so we go out on this boat. We get there. We go. We only have a day and a half. Right. We go out on a boat and we've got to catch a croc for this film. Right. we got the whole film crew with us, stuff like that. We're like and, and he's like, all right, this is what we're going to do. We've got this noose on the end of a pole. We're going to try to, you know, get to the bank. They're all on the banks. And and as they come out, you Newsome, and then we can pull them over to land, right? And so, you know, one croc after another explodes in the water, gone, explodes in the water, gone. Expl hours and hours and hours. We, we aren't even getting close, right? So finally, I look back to him and I go, Mark, you know, like, 
how many crocs have you caught, dude? And he's like, and he's been there over a year. He's a biologist. I mean, crocodile biologist. He's like, well, I've never caught one. I'm like, what? Here we are with the film crew. We haven't caught one. Like we're screwed, right? And so we had we had a half a day the next day. So I spent the night like sleepless, right? Like, what am I going to do about this, man? You know. And I kind of devised a plan. And literally, we went out the next morning, and within an hour, we had a, a, like a 15 foot bull crocodile, giant crocodile. But my point is, is that now you're pulling them on land mm -hmm. when you jump that thing, right? Because you got to jump them, tape them, and stuff like Let's that. Pull so that a 15 foot bull crocodile. Let's put a bull crocodile. Oh yeah, Let's yeah, Nile crocodile. Expense. Yeah, right there. I mean, oh, there we go. Oh, is that yeah, it? That, yeah, there you go, man. That, that's that's right there. They're giant. Let's you see. know, one of those say bull crocodile. Yeah, it's just a male crocodile, you know. So the the bull crocodile, the male crocodile is going to be one of your bigger crocodiles in the in, in the in the area, and they're all hierarchy, right? The biggest one is the bull because he's like, hey, I've got this dam. Don't come around me. I'm going to. I got all the women I want. You can't Can have. You any zoom in on one of those spins. Can you pull it up, please? So that's one of them right there. Yeah, I mean, these, this is the size of the, you know, that's actually smaller. You'll put a dart part. on them. No, we don't. No, 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 nothing, man. We just literally we noose them, get them on land, and then that's what I'm saying. No hesitation, right? You have to jump it. You have to jump on top of it and get that thing subdued so that someone can tape its mouth so you can do your research on it. So right? how were you guys, the one you guys were able to get, you guys, what what was the difference that you guys chose to do that day? So so basically what happened was there was one area on the, the end of the, 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 the dam that actually had some hippos on there, and, and so the boat driver didn't want to go over there, right? So what's happened is when they were just exploding in the water, they're just disappearing. On the opposite side of the dam, it was kind of shallow for about 100 feet. Mm -hmm. So when they exploded off the, 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 the side, they'd have to run and and so I knew that if we could like triangulate when hey let's get to where they get to deep water now we got a chance to noose them right mm. now the the boat driver really, really didn't want to go over there because of course hippos oh, they'll are dangerous cap capsize a boat capsize the boat and kill you but I'm like that's the only chance we have right and so we went out and like I said there was a big 15 plus foot crocodile and and we that's the one right and I said and yeah. I remember our boat driver's name was Amos and I said Amos don't go towards the crocodile go where he's gonna go mm. right like when he's exploding that way you got to meet him at that right when he gets to that water right and we got there got the noose on him drug him across land it took six of us to drag him out onto land because he was so heavy and then i had to jump his head right you know so you got to jump on top of his head with your body what are you wearing yeah. i mean this right here you know this is, i'm like i'm not no khakis no hat what? just me you know but no hesitation you hesitate sneakers though huh Yes, it was, yeah, it was sneakers, yeah. but man, slip and fall, you're done, you know, but like I said, you hesitate, that thing's going to take your hand off, or your right. arm off, you so know, you have so to be quick, you have to no make, hesitation. you have to make your own move, do you think they respect it almost a little bit more, or they're just, it's just surprise? I think it's surprise, yeah, I don't think they care either way, you know, I mean, they, they you know, listen, crocodiles have one thing in mind, they, they're predators, man, they're apex predators, 100 million years on this planet, you know, so. So when you say an apex predator, is a snake an apex predator? Uh, it can be, it depends on where it is, you know, a lot of snakes aren't apex predators, Apex predators would just mean that they don't have a, uh, you know, there's nobody predate, predates on them, right? Really, most apex predators, crocodiles, uh, you know, the list goes on of anything that would, you know, lions, tigers. The only real predators that they have are humans, really, you know? We're the only ones that can kill them. I mean, in the wild, if humans weren't around, nothing kills a big crocodile, wow. right? You know? So big crocodiles are really there. They don't have anything getting them. Not well, not except for humans. You not know? anymore. Yeah, not anymore. And, and now down in the Everglades, you've got the Burmese pythons that are eating alligators, which you know those are both apex predators. You know, in Asia, Burmese pythons, twenty foot, you know, eighteen, twenty foot pythons, they're the apex predators once they hit adulthood. You know, nothing's killing those guys. But now you've got two of them down in Florida fighting for the same land. You know, and where are these two located at? Do they know? Uh, yeah, they're down in the Everglades. You know, so there. how many, bur are there a lot of Burmese pythons alive yeah. on the planet? Yeah, well, just in, in Florida alone, there there's estimates of a couple hundred thousand. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. yeah. And those are those are not supposed to be there, man. I'm they're not, not supposed to be sleep, there. I'm sleep, dog. <laughs> You're making me scared, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm listen, I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to go the other way. We're going to talk about how awesome snakes are, right? I don't know if we can make it there. Yeah, we can. I don't know, man. I didn't come here to scare you, Theo. I, know, I came I knew here you to. You didn't, and that's. I, I, I just think it's. Uh, I'm. I'm even an example of what I'm saying. Of what I was thinking about earlier. It's like. It's like you have all this pin. I remember the first snake I ever saw I was walking with my grandparents, and my grandmother hated me, and this freaking snake would next thing I know wrapped around my boot and I was so scared they're like don't move and my grandmother was like beating me in the leg with this shovel and I'm like what is happening I couldn't even see the snake I didn't know what was going on I knew my grandmother didn't like me 
someone that's like this, I knew, you know, I didn't think it was going to go down like this. We're in the woods. You know what I'm saying? I thought we we're going fishing. And now I'm thinking that they're trying to take my life, you know? And then it's a black snake wrapped around my, uh, wrapped around my boot. Um, and then I remember being a kid swimming in the, uh, like the a Chafalaya or Boga Falaya or something. And with my friend Robert and he had, he was like haunted or something. He had some kind of issue where he would say stuff and then like he would repeat everything he would say over real quietly under his breath. He'd be like, it's lunchtime. It's lunchtime. And he did it for everything, you know. So I think he was supposed to be twins or something. You know, I don't know what happened to him. But um, anyway, he and I are out there playing, right? And he and we just see this on top of the water. just, shoo, 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 shoo. And we're just, I mean, it's just so much. Every time it was always fear. I think I never knew anybody who introduced me to a snake as a, hey, this is a safe thing around. This right. is a safe thing. Yeah. So it was always a lot of fear in in the environment of snakes. So I think yeah. I, that's what I think I am as an example of people show up with to you with all that shit. Like, hey, you did it. Yeah. You know, you yeah. did it, Brian. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. you put those snakes in my childhood, you yeah. asshole. Yeah. Like I think there's a lot of that because it's such a fear thing yeah. for a lot of people, or for me anyway. Yeah. Well, you know what the opposite of fear is? Is knowledge. Right. So the more you know, the less you fear. Right. So. Yeah. You know, when your grandma was beating you, all you thought of is bad snake, right? Yeah. Not bad grandma, but bad snake. Yeah, I probably thought a little bit of both about my grandma. My grandmother was really, she was a real, she was out there. But, but yeah, I think, yeah, you, bl yeah, a lot of stuff gets, yeah, it's just such a fear thing, you know? Yeah. So, the, and there's not a lot, and especially there didn't used to be, there wasn't a, we didn't have snakes in the classroom. Really? We, yeah, we didn't. We had one fellow named Curtis. Oh, I'll tell you this, dude. So, we went to prom or something, some dance. Sadie Hawkins or something, you gotta wear the same shirt, right? Yeah. And my buddy ended up touching this girl's crotch for like the first time ever in our childhood. Yeah. And I don't know if it's appropriate. I don't know your son's in here, but. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, is it okay? He's touched, it, he's I'm not touched gonna say anything gross. Before, okay, good. Yeah. yeah, and it's safe. It's a human crotch, you know, nothing insane. But, um, and my buddy's dad comes out there by the fire and is like, spends the whole night like, like th basically massaging my buddy's hand that he touched the girl's crotch with like real dark stuff going on. So anyway, that night we have to sleep at my buddy's house. Right. And he had like 15 snakes in his room wow. in cages. And dude, I'd never, I'd never knowingly slept within probably almost 50 miles of a snake. Cause that's where the zoo was closest to us. Mm -hmm. And I remember he turned the, I'm laying there. We all have to sleep in his bed. I'm laying there and he turns the ceiling fan and he had the fastest ceiling fan I've ever heard in my life. So suddenly every snake I feel like is just wide awake. Every snake smell is just swirling in the room. And I'm just laying there in this cauldron of just like hopelessness. You know, it had just been such an insane night. And, uh, and then my friend's dog barked outside. The dad went out, shot the dog in the head, right? <laughs> Mr. Joe. But anyway, uh, but anyway, so that was just another scary night where I'm surrounded by snakes, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so trauma. Yeah, I've just had a lot of trauma with snakes, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, PTSD. Yeah. I do. I think I do have PTSD. <laughs> yeah. And now you got a snake showing up in your living room or whatever, you know. Yeah, I do, man. We got a question that came in right here, actually, from a gentleman. I think. What is this? Hey, what's up, Brian? What's up, Theo? Um, my name's Geo. Nice to meet you. Uh, I got a question for Brian regarding reptiles, snakes, things of that nature, nature itself. Um, you feel like there, what, what's like the biggest misconception you feel that most people have about snakes, venomous or non-venomous and, uh, or reptiles in, in general that you feel like you'd like to squash right now. You just, you just want to set the record straight for the world, the U S and other places. And Theo, not to make things a little awkward, but do you think that Brian is in cahoots with Bobby Lee and that's how you got that snake? That's how you got that little snake in your, in your hotel that you posted on your story. Yeah. It's a thought, not to make it awkward or whatever, but just think, think about it. All right, thank you for your service, Mr. Gonzalez. That's a good question. Uh, that's two good questions. Let's start with the first one. What is a misconception, man? Because I feel misconceived. Yeah, probably. yeah, totally. Yeah, that they're killers. You know that they're they're you know like just cold blooded killers that all they want to do they're put here to to hurt you. You know, which is just not the case. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, why do you think a rattlesnake has a rattle? 
to tell you to stay away from it, right? It doesn't want to bite you. Yeah. You know, so that's a huge misconception that snakes are just heartless killers and that they're here to hurt you. What are they here to do? They're here, really, they're here to per, you know, be part of the ecosystem, right? So, you know, like think about a farmer, right? You yeah. know, a farmer that has, you know, mice like grain, right? So yeah. now there's mice in the fields. Well, those snakes are there to kill the mice to save your grain, right? Yeah. You know, that's happened before where like, you know, maybe a kid gets bit in the town by a rattlesnake, then they go and they kill all the rattlesnakes all of a sudden, mm-hmm. and then they lose their crop to infestation of rodents, right? I see. So, so it's a real equalizer. It is. It's it, They're here to equalize everything. It's a huge, huge, huge part of the ecosystem. And uh, one that if you take it away, you're, you're in big trouble. Really? Yeah, big trouble. Yeah. So when, why don't, do snakes operate mostly at night? Are they nighttime workers? They can be both. You know, they can be both. So it's basically how you would tell a, a nocturnal animal from a diurnal animal, daytime, nighttime, is uh, round pupils, mm-hmm. daytime, mm-hmm. Uh, slits like cat eyes, nighttime. The one you had was actually a diurnal, moving around in the daytime. That's daytime. Daytime, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I don't know Bobby Lee, you know, so I, I, you know, I'm not going to take any If there's one ethnicity you had to guess, let's ballpark it. Mm-hmm. And let's say Asian. Mm-hmm. That would send someone a snake. What what ethnicity is most associated with snakes throughout the history of time? Oh my goodness, that's great. You know, I, I that's wow. You know, like obviously ancient Egyptians were really into it. Uh, Indians. I mean, you know, you have in India, you have people, you know, kids that are raised to be snake people from the time they're infants. You know, like around snakes, they're they're some of the most adept snake people. I, you know, I think those two cultures are really, really. You know, J- Japan again, they yeah. they worship a lot of snakes. They have temples, snake temples, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So I think all those things, you know, and then, um, yeah. So I think probably Egyptian, Indian, Japanese would be my two or my three top ones. Egyptian, Indian, Japanese, Bobby Lee. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, well, he admitted to sending me the snake, so that's the crazy part. Did he admit Yeah, it? he has an episode of his podcast coming out in like a couple of days that he admitted to sending me the snake. He sent it, huh? So it's just insane, I feel like. And how do you even get a snake through the mail? Can you mail a snake to someone? What are the legal U.S. postal system rules about a snake or FedEx? Anything? Can't mail it, but you can FedEx it. So I could send it to FedEx it to your door, but you can't mail it. You, that's I think that's why the is the mail or the postal people are they more afraid of it or what is the you deal? Know, it's just where it's just a, a rule that they have. I think that if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong about it, but I think you can ship frogs weirdly enough, you you know, through the mail, uh, but you can't do reptiles. But okay. uh, but FedEx, UPS, you know, chances are if you're flying on a plane, there's a reptile in that <sighs> the belly of that plane, Damn. Yeah, or tarantulas. There's probably just think about that next time you're sitting up there uh-uh. having a cocktail. No, I don't want to do that. Okay. I mean, I respect you for wanting me to, but I yeah. just, I don't know if that's going to help me, man. It's been hard for me to sleep since I saw that snake in my house. Really? Yeah, yeah. We got to work on you then, man. We got to get you over it. <sighs> yeah, I do need to, man. Um, the last thing you want to do is look hellish in your clothing. The last thing you want to do is see somebody wearing, they, they're wearing a, a tank top and a, a condom. You know what I'm saying? And a hat. You got to look good. Yep. That's why you need to check out Public Rec. They make elevated athleisure wear in multidimensional sizes because they believe that comfort starts with a better fit. Man, there's nothing I like more than having a a style that can look like I could be in the gym and then I could also be in a meeting with Jim. Who's Jim? He owns the company, okay? It's a fabric unlike any other. Public Rec spent years engineering the perfect blend of softness. Damn! Damn! You love children come over and pet you and try to feed you a cup of corn. That's how soft it damn is. Stretch and durability. All the performance benefits, everything you love. These are always the top choice in my rotation. Public Rec. They rarely discount anything, but right now, they have an exclusive offer just for TPW listeners. Go to Public Rec. That's public, R-E-C dot com. Use promo code Theo. To receive 10% off, that's publicrec, publicrec.com. Use our promo code Theo for 10% off. At least go check out what they have. You're going to like it. Look, it's tough when you're looking for insurance online. It's aggravating. You don't want to do it. It feels overwhelming a lot of times. It feels like too much. That's what I've noticed. Well, 
Times have changed. And thanks to the zebra, the zebra, it's that striped, sneaky, prison-looking animal. Yup, you can compare car and home insurance quotes from every major insurance company in under five minutes, giving you all the facts you need to make the right decision. In fact, the zebra saves people an average of $922 a year on home and auto combined. It's a lot of money. It's an extra G. Get yourself a swing set or get something for the children. Get a teeter-totter for your daddy. Yep, the zebras helped me. It can help you. Compare quotes for free at thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O and support the podcast. That's at thezebra.com slash Theo. Save time and money in minutes on your home and auto insurance. If someone sees a snake in the house, thankfully there's a Lipscomb University here, not mm-hmm. far from here, and the soccer coach, his wife uh, saw that I had a snake in my house, and he came over because I guess soccer, they're running around out there all the time. They're people, somebody gets bit probably every couple of days because they're in a big field, you know. Yeah. But um, so anyway, he came over and helped me get rid of it. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But um. But yeah, what do you do then? Because now I'm like thinking I need to get traps. I need to make sure there's no more snakes in my house. Yeah. Like um, that's where a lot of my fear is at now, you yeah. know, and my concern really. No, I'm sure it's just a one-off thing, you know. I mean, number one, fi- snakes don't really like den and infest places, you know. That really? doesn't really happen. So so it's a, they're pretty solitary animals. And that I saw the snake that was in your house. It's just a rat snake, and it was like, you know, probably a year old, something like that. So there's no brothers and sisters hanging out, you know, waiting for you around the corner. So I think you're pretty safe. You're pretty good. And as far as what to do, you know, I mean, thankfully in this area, you, you, know, you, you know, you just call somebody, that pet, local pet shop or something like that. They send someone over and pick it up. You know, there are actual snake catchers in Africa, in Australia, that that's their full-time job is just to go and, you know, get snakes out. That I've done that in Africa with snake catchers, go out and remove mambas from a, a, literally a shanty shed this size where it's like, you know, someone wakes up and there's a mamba in their, their ceiling, you know, and, and we're talking a room this size that it's dangerous, man. You, you know, there's nowhere in the room that you can't get bit when that snake is around, you know, I mean, it's got that strike range. So, so there's literally people that that's what they do for a living is just remove snakes and and protect people but in this country we don't have that problem in this country can you die from a snake bite uh, it's pretty rare. I mean, anyone can die. You know, you've got diamondbacks, you've got, uh, you know, quite, you know, pygmy rattlesnakes. You've got, you know, lots of rattlesnakes okay. mainly in this country. Also have coral snakes, but actual death rate in this country is pretty low because of treatment, right? Um, if you get bit, you get to a hospital, you get treatment. It's not going to be pretty, you know, depending on how bad the bite is, but, um, but you're gonna, you're gonna live. You know, or rare. and yet yeah, was is any person more likely to get bit by a snake? Like if you're wearing jewelry, if you are yeah. Caucasian, if you are yeah. um, Russian, if you are uh, Mexican, if you are black, if you are uh, wearing like a costume or something, I is there say, anybody more likely to get bit? I would say the most likely person to get bit, really the most most likely, is someone that keeps them as a pet. Second would be someone that's drinking, comes across a rattlesnake in the wild and wants to cowboy it and like, look at me, I can get the rattlesnake. You know, yeah. they seen Steve Irwin, whatever the case yeah. is down the road. And they're like, I'm going to do this. That? Uh, that is a bug of some sort. Okay. Yeah. That's not a reptile. Damn. Yeah. That, no, nah, that I'd be more afraid of than a reptile. Oh yeah. We got that in here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah. But, uh, yeah, those are, you know, usually alcohol has a lot to do with, uh, Getting with people bit. getting bit. Yeah, alcohol a lot of times. You so know, there's no real ethnicity or skin tone or anything. Do no. you notice that Native Americans have good relationships with snakes? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I, I have had my family as Native American. Oh, really? They like it. They like them, you know, but uh, uh, I wouldn't say they're any better or worse off for it, at least the ones in my family. But they do fine. Wow, that's interesting because I would feel like they would have a whole different, like, just a different history with them, you yeah. know, because they have more experience probably being around them. Yeah, I think that's another thing. We're just so not in nature or not in as much nature as we used to be, right. you know, and so we see less snakes. Um, no, that's true. Especially yeah. I was in California for a long time, so we never saw a snake there. Really? Yeah, I never oh. saw any snakes in California unless it was already had one. Um, well, that was about it. 
Yeah, you get out in the deserts and around L.A. and there, there's a lot of wow. rattlesnakes. You know, I mean, it's, it's it's not far away from the city too. Trust me. I mean, you you're right outside the city and you're you're getting rattlesnakes and gopher snakes. I mean, it's there's a lot out there. I've I've caught a bunch of snakes out in California in the L.A. area. So you're growing up. You got the fa- you got the bi- you got the mo- you got the money from selling the snakes. What yeah. size snakes are you selling? Big babies? Are you well, selling then, eggs? I, what are yeah, you doing? Yeah, I sell. I, I used to sell babies. You know, that's how I started. You know, and it was uh, I sold babies of, of snakes that were going to get 18 foot. I sold babies of snakes that were going to get five foot. You know, uh, now I don't do big snakes. I, I we do still breed some stuff, but mainly I'm education, zoo, film stuff like that. You know, I'm not into the, the big breeder world like I used to be. But uh, um, but that's how I came up because that was the only way listen i you know i just wanted to work with reptiles i didn't know you know and, and breeding reptiles was the best way for me to do it right i could get a job at the zoo but they, there's not much money there and there's not many openings you know so uh so yeah so i worked with reptiles i bred reptiles because that was the the way i could you know it's the labor of love you know what's the funnest reptile to breed oh my gosh uh, I think, it, you know, like live bear ones, you know, because, you know, snakes can have eggs and they can have live, right? And when you just like wake really? up. Really? Yeah. Like rattlesnakes have live, right? So they just have a baby come right out of yeah, them? Yeah, just boom, we're live. As a matter of fact, crazy story. Just recently, I had what I thought was a pair of anacondas. I have a giant female anaconda, like I'm talking like, you know, 125 pound anaconda. Damn. And then I had, now males are, they're, they're what they call sexually dimorphic. So males are smaller. So I was sold this animal's male. My mistake, didn't sex it. And so I'm like, God, they're not breeding. That's kind of weird. This is literally like a month, month and a half ago. And one day uh, I come in and the male is, uh, now that's never been in with a male, by the way. This is, these two animals have been together. That's it. Uh, has a virgin baby. It's by itself. By itself. Because it have both yeah, genitalia? It's, yeah, it's, no, it didn't have both genitalia. It's what they call parthenogenesis. So it's, it's only a female. It's like a virgin birth. No sperm, no anything. And it's actually a clone of its, itself. No way. Yeah, so my male turned into a female and had a virgin birth. So, so Do they cool. use that type of information to try and learn more about human cloning and stuff? Like, I mean, that seems like a they, real... Yeah, they should. I don't, think, I don't know if they are. I mean, maybe someone out there is. I don't know. No one ever contacted me to say, hey, can we do some research on it? It would be cool, though. I'd love to see it. But, but yeah, I mean, genetically, there is no male. You know, there's only one side. And there's actually, there are reptile species, yeah. like morning geckos, a little lizard, right? Oh, that yeah. That have no males in the entire species. They're all, everyone's women. females. Damn. Isn't that crazy? I mean, they, so and they produce like, so parthenogenesis in... in let's say an anaconda is rare, like very rare. Like there's probably only been a handful of recorded cases ever. But then there's morning geckos that that's all they have is parthenogenesis. But I'd say my going back to your point is is live babies are always the funnest. So that's really the power in nature. I mean, nature, when when put up against the wall, can just make its own self. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the Jurassic Park thing, right? Nature finds a way. Can other animals do that too? Uh, I don't think mammals, there's ever been a parthenogenic mammal. Can you look that up? Yeah, then? yeah, see it. Yeah, parthenogenic mammal. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is the first snake. Damn. <laughs> well, you you said deep it, not here, me. man. Huh? You said it, not me. I mean, I, I I never felt his skin, but I would. he doesn't seem like it. Yeah. What do we say here? There are no known cases of naturally occurring mammale, mammalian. mammalian parthenogenesis in the world in the wild so, yeah, so it didn't progeny happen of mammals what does progeny mean Brian? offspring parthenogenic offspring of mammals would have two x chromosomes and would therefore be female in 1935 george Gerwin reported successfully wow into a rabbit reported successfully inducing parthenogenesis in a rabbit wow i wonder how he would induce parthenogenesis in a rabbit I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know how that goes. That's wild. I mean, that damn. guy. I'd like to have a beer with that guy. Yeah, I'd like to freaking make sure his daughter's okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, damn, that's intense, man. Yeah. Wow. So that's what one thing that baffles me a lot, man, is just the ability of nature. You yeah. know, especially yeah. we get so like cityfied and comfortable mm-hmm. and like so used to like uh, human accoutrements and stuff yeah. that we forget sometimes how much of nature we are. 
Yeah. At least I do anyway. Yeah, I love getting out, man. You got to get away. And, and especially when you're in the bush for a while, like you get out, you know, like just totally away from everything. It's amazing how quick you adapt, right? The first couple of days when you're away from everything, like cell phones and internet and TV and stuff like that, it's a little bit weird, right? Yeah. Because we're so used to that, like, oh, got to check Instagram, you know? And uh, a couple of days, it's, it's a little weird. But then all of a sudden, you just kind of forget about it, you know? And it's, it's wild how quickly you can acclimate into a situation because there's been times where I've been out for 30 40 days you know where there's like nothing you know i mean you're just in the bush you know working and and it's it's actually amazing and then when you come back to reality it feels really weird you know what i mean like you know you turn on the tv it's almost like over sense you know like oh that's that's bizarre it feels almost bad yeah it does it really does you know i mean i look at my screen time on my phone all the time i'm like damn i spent two hours on my phone today you know yeah just this week man i'm trying to really back off I'm trying to really, really back off, make things less important if I can. Here's a question right here from a young man that seems rather interesting. Brian, Theo, what's up, boys? Uh, stoked to see Brian on the podcast. I've always been a big fan of, you know, reptiles and all things wild, if you will. Um, I guess my question's for Brian. What are your thoughts on the existence of a giant anaconda still being out there? lurking in the depths of the Amazon or Venezuela or wherever those things would be. Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of cryptozoological, if you will, but figured I'd just throw it out there. Peace. Theo, see you in Charleston, man. Oh, well, excellent. I'll see you soon. Well, yeah, what about that Moby Dick out there? Is there something out there yeah, going well, on? Listen, um, Theodore Roosevelt, or Teddy Roosevelt, I'm sorry, uh, when he was president, put out uh, a grant for fifty thousand dollars for anyone that could come up with a snake over thirty foot live or dead, wow. right? Way back then, and uh, and and then it ultimately ended up, I think, getting raised to like seventy five thousand dollars until the nineties when they discontinued the the grant. And then recently, I even put out something saying I'd give someone a hundred grand Damn. if they came up with a thirty foot snake. I would prefer live instead of dead, but uh, and no one's ever claimed that prize. Damn. So so is there a snake out there in Venezuela? By the way, he had a cool shirt on. Um, that's possible. I mean, you know, is there Megalodon? Probably not, you know, but I'm not going to say never, right? You know? Do you think nature could be trying to run it back ever? Do you ever get that sense being out in nature a lot and seeing a lot of these animals like on ground zero of like uh, like some of these genetic sequences messing with these baby yeah. animals? Do you ever uh, think that nature could be trying to run it back and get more dinosaurs out here? Man, I tell you what, uh, I mean, you know, listen, it's possible. There's a lot of land out there that no one has ever, you know, animals are being discovered all the time, right? You know, I think it was in the early 2000s, there was a, a, a an ape, like a 200-pound ape that was discovered in Vietnam that no one, it was like a mythical lore for 200 years. And I was like, no, there's no, that's not true. And then they found that it was real, you know? Yeah. So is it possible? Yeah. I mean, I think it's possible. Look, coelacanths, you know, a fish, you know, a coelacanth. Have uh-uh. you ever seen them? So if you ever, uh, you know, yeah, coelacanth, um, these th- were thought to be extinct for two, for a hundred million years. And now they've found them multiple times. So is it possible there's like some dinosaur out there? Heck yeah, there's possible. Is it likely? You know, this is what I always tell people. When someone says, "Hey, do you believe in this?" I say, "I want to believe, mm. but I don't. I don't know. You yeah. know, what I mean, I don't know. It's never been found. You know, I would love Titano Boa to still be around a fifty foot snake. You know, maybe one's crawling around there. Most likely not, right? Just like megalodons, probably not a megalodon in the water, right? But we don't know. What about Loch, uh, Loch Ness monsters? Mm-hmm. Is when you ever yeah. see that, did you believe it or not? Uh, same, I'll say the same thing. I want to believe. Do I think there's a, a Loch Ness monster? No, I don't. But I want to believe because it'd be badass, right? Yeah. I mean, could you imagine if a you know plesiosaur would get found in Loch Ness? That'd be absolutely amazing. Be sick, but uh, but I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm I'm a pretty realistic guy. Until I have proof. I mean, I'm a science guy, so you got to show me before. You know, I, as much as I want my heart to believe in it, mm-hmm. until I see it, I can't believe it. Who was your first girlfriend? Was it your wife or no? Oh no no I had I was you dated around a little oh yeah a little bit yeah, yeah a little bit a little little and would you messing with snakes then would you bring Not really. would you bring a snake on a date would you bring a date to a snake uh no I, to be honest with you I didn't 
uh, do that much of Would that. Would you keep yeah. them separate ever at that age? Were you like kind of yeah, yeah. scared that girls yeah. were like, this is scary? Yeah, I think I think especially when I was like 15, 16, you know, I was kind of a rocker, played in a band, you know, I had some groupie girlfriend, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I, I didn't want them to think I was that much of a freak, you know, yeah. especially back then. Like I oh, said, it yeah. was so, you know, you, you know, you were like, I don't want to lose this. So, yeah. Each town had one snake dude or every other town had a snake dude. Like that's kind of. Yeah. I remember it being like, oh, you'd hear like, oh, that's the snake dude. And people were like, what? Yeah, and then he'd like he scurry off or something. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't that guy, but but uh, yeah, I was. You know, to be honest with, like in high school, the last few day, years of high school, like people thought it was cool, right? They're like, yeah. oh man, he keeps snakes. You know, he plays in a rock band. I mean, he, you know, it's like I, people dug it. You know, I mean, I was friends with that. You know, the jocks to the 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 nerds. I was friends with everyone because I kind of had a little of everything in me, right? I was into science. I was, you know, I still liked to you know sports and and I you know played rock music and I kept snakes. It's kind of like a little bit for everybody. Um, who was your first kiss? Do you remember that growing up? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Karina was her name. I think I was about 11 years old, believe it or not. I was a pretty Dang. young starter. No, I take that back. I take that back. Uh, I was eight years old. Dang. Named Helen yeah. Helen Pollitz was sounds, her name. This sounds yeah. illegal, I yeah, want to say it was, also. I, I think okay. she was like 14. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so was, half my friends have been busted for this kind of stuff. Yeah, it was, so, it was uh, yeah. yeah, and and, and if I, if memory serves me correct, it was a little more than a kiss, but Dang, yeah, dude, yeah, jeepers. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At eight years old, what more is there? A yeah. kiss would have sunk me in the damn mud, dude. Yeah, yeah. A kiss would turn my knees into damn quicksand knees, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. I couldn't even imagine anything yeah. more at eight years old, dude. Yeah. My God, <laughs> that's All wild, right. man. Yeah. Um. So whenever you met your wife, when you first met her, did you know it was going to be your wife or no? Dude, this is it's a funny story, man. I swear, and this is a honest to God truth. Uh, I met her on her 18th birthday mm -hmm. at a party, mm -hmm. and she was one of my best friend's girlfriend's girlfriend. Okay. I met her. I went home that night, and I told my mom I met the girl I want to marry. Wow. And and then so then my friend, I was like, hey, I gotta meet meet up with Lori, have a date, you know, because we hung out a little bit, not too much, you know, for maybe a half hour, just talked and stuff like that. So the next day, I called my friend, like, I gotta go on a date with this Lori. Can you hook me up, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, so Kathy my friend uh said uh yeah sure called Lori. she didn't even remember meeting me no yeah so i met the girl i wanted to marry she didn't even oh, remember damn, meeting dude, me damn. literally was like what i don't even remember this guy like, don't you remember the guy staring at you for four yeah, hours yeah yeah like, long-haired yeah. guy you know i mean yeah. i was the only long-haired guy at the party you know what i mean Come yeah on. Dude. didn't even remember me didn't even remember me but uh the guy but, with uh, the fucking rango shirt on yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly but hey man it worked out you know she uh she eventually came around, and we've been together ever since. Dude, that's a real comeback story right there, I right. feel like. I think that's a total comeback story. Yeah. Guys, you got to hear that, man. Persistence. Guy, yeah. Zeroed in on a girl all night. She had no idea yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. he, that he even existed. Yeah, no, not at all. I could have been Damn. like, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's cool because a lot of a lot of guys, that'll shut us down right from the right, beginning, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, you got to be persistent, but not a stalker. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Don't want to be a stalker. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just like, you know. And we were friend zone for a little while. I was like, all right, you know, she Great. just wants to be a friend for a little bit, you know? Great. And uh, and then, then, then you know, next thing you know, we're together for 33 years. So did you have children? Were they live or were they egg when you had them? Uh, both both were live. Live okay. born, what we call uh, ovoviviparous. Oh, really? Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thanks. You had two live children, and you got a boy and a girl, or would you get? Yeah, boy and a girl. Girl came first. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be a grandpa this January. No. For the first time. Yep. So Congrats, I got. Congrats, dude. Yep, you look next, so young. Next. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. I'll be uh, a, a energetic grandpa. Hopefully, uh, raise another generation of reptile loving people. So spread that love. You know. Are they all rep lovers? What you have right now? Your family? No. To be totally honest with you, it's it's weird. My my son uh, works with us. Uh, my daughter. Uh, worked with us out of like like she had to right when she was younger but when she graduated college she was really and uh, you know like hey listen I just want to tell you right now I'm never working for you I'm going off and doing my own thing and she got like corporate jobs stuff like that so I wouldn't say anyone's like overly like rep like I'm a reptile nut right like there's not probably a 
I mean, there's probably two days out of a year that I'm not around a reptile, wow. right? Like I'm always around a reptile or an animal. You know, sometimes it's not a reptile, but maybe I'm around, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, lions or whatever. But I'm always around animals. Whereas, uh, you know, my no one in my family has that gene where I they're see. just obsessed. You know, they tolerate it. You know, my wife works because that's what she does, and she's she's learned to like love the animals. But she she's not like listen. I always say like if tomorrow I was like we never have to see a reptile again, she's not gonna cry. Right. Yeah. I mean, she'd be like, okay, that's good. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's a question that came in right here from some uh, good gentleman right here. This is Roy, I think. Yeah. Hey, guys, it's Roy here from Kansas. <laughs> I was excited when I saw you guys were doing a podcast together because I watched both of you pretty religiously. Uh, Theo, I wanted to know what advice you have for Brian's son, Noah. I don't know if he's going to be on the podcast or not. But I know he's been trying to do some, uh, a little bit of stand-up locally where they live. Uh, what advice would you give him as a amateur to maybe make it in the big leagues one day? Also, I wanted to tell Brian I successfully hatched my first two clutches of ball pythons this year, okay. or last year, I guess. Uh, I'm getting ready to pair up uh, all the females again this year. Okay. And uh, probably have about six clutches this year, so... Anyway, gang, gang. Thank you, Voldemort. Awesome. Look at that. Yeah, so um, advice. What do you got, you know? That is a good question, man. Thank you for the question, Roy, man. Yeah. I appreciate you paying attention to myself and to Brian. That's cool, man. It's interesting what kind of people would pay attention to you and me. Yeah. You yeah, know, that's yeah. real interesting. I'm sure there's a lot of crossover. I'm sure there is. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I find it interesting. Sometimes you'll partner up with people like, okay, anyway, what is happening? Yeah. You know? Um I would say for Noah, who is here, by the way, good to see you, Noah. Um, I would say, I even think in the beginning, dude, I used to tell Jim Gaffigan's jokes, right? What? Yeah, I told this to Jim Gaffigan. What? He was on one time, I said, look, dude, I just want to apologize to you. I didn't have any jokes in the beginning. I just used to tell your jokes, right? Hot pocket? Did yeah. the hot pocket thing? Oh, uh, yeah. I, oh, I told a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. It was good. I think I even sold T-shirts based on one of his jokes one time. So I would tell the joke and then sell a shirt after the show. Yeah. But what it did for me was it just got me used to telling jokes on stage. I had plans to tell my own jokes. Mm -hmm. And I had some of my own jokes peppered in there. Yeah. Um, but it just got me comfortable okay. telling jokes. Yeah. Sure. So it was yeah. like, it wasn't anything that was being recorded or anything like that. So sure. it just got me like, yeah. how do I learn to get whatever some of the comfort is? Sure. And then I think one benefit that Noah probably has is that your dad is a unique character, mm -hmm. right? My dad was a unique character. My dad was 70 when I was born. Everybody knows that. So like, it just gave me a lot of material. It was like, you know, it gave me a lot of like cute kind of little jokes that were mm -hmm. safe, that were pretty clean. Yeah. Uh, that I could tell about my dad, you yeah. know, um, and so I think I always felt like that was kind of a blessing. Like I was always angry that my dad, not angry, but it was always felt odd. You know, kids always want to be just the regular kids always want to be like, sure, you know, nothing that stands out real crazy. Sure. You know, your dad comes to show and tell and he's the fucking guy out there who's doing magic or something. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that yeah. kid yeah. is probably going to get beaten down. Right. But it's like, so I think. If your dad comes to, and your dad comes to show and tell and he's like, I was born in 1910, you know, that's a weird time for the class. Yes. Um, so I think it could, there's just a lot of unique material when your dad is unique like you yeah. are. Yeah. So I think that that's, I would play on just easy stuff in the beginning. Yeah. Um, so those are things that I think are just probably gifts that are in your wheelhouse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you come from a fan, I mean, there's a lot of stories, right? I mean, you know, my mom and dad are you know, have a reptile zoo. We travel all over the world. We do crazy stuff. Been on Discovery Channel. I mean, you know, been on, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, there's a lot of material there. You yeah. Know, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird life, right? You know, I say that all the time. I mean, like, I've lived a huge, the craziest life ever. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the weirdest thing. Like, I literally clean snake shit for a living. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the weirdest thing, but yet I get to do the most amazing things on the planet. You know, right. it's like, you know, most people look at me and like, how did this happen? I'm like, I don't even know how it happened. You know, I mean, like, I don't even know how I got here. You know, I'm sitting in Theo Vaughn's <laughs> podcast room here. You know, it's crazy, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's definitely interesting. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some more and more of my curiosities about snakes. So snakes, um, why do snakes eat rats and stuff like that? 
Well, most most of them eat rats or rabbits or pigs or whatever the case may be. They're just carnivores, right? You know, but there are snakes that eat really weird things, like snails. Some will eat worms. Some will only eat slugs. Other snakes eat only other snake or mainly other snakes. Damn. Like king cobras eat mainly other snakes. You know, in the wild. So, uh, so they're a very diverse animal, right? You know, but in captivity, most you know most snakes that that people keep are mice and rats. You know, that's what do snakes doing. ever do anything fun together? You think? No. No, I don't think so. They're pretty solitary animals. We keep most of our snakes separate, and except for breeding. I think they just want to be left alone. You know, I, I think they're not like a real social animal. Although there's like the Narcissi snake dens. If you want to pull that up, it's pretty cool. Narcissi snake den up in Manitoba, Canada. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. You, it's the place you would love to go. I'm sure with your. And is it outdoors or it's an indoors? It's place. it's outdoors. And, and so it's a natural occurring. A thing. naturally occurring snake oh. den that is. This is your nightmare right here, dude. Oh. I mean, thousands and thousands of snakes gathered Why are together. They doing it? Yeah, thousands and thousands of snakes. But but it's crazy. I mean, it's like uh, it's a super popular tourism place. You know, people go and see these thousands of snakes that have have denned together for hibernation or brumation is what they would call it. And uh, pretty crazy, right? Damn. I've never been. I want to go. Huh? I want to go so bad. You know, I've never seen anything like it. But I want to check it out. It's like Burning Man. Yeah, Burning Man for snakes. Right. Exactly. It's like berm. Yeah. It's like Burning Man. And how much snakes are there, and what are they, why are they there again? Well, they're just brumating. So so a lot of times, in particular species like garter snakes, will brumate together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're mating. They're not even mating. No, they're just like going to sleep, for like a hibernation. For, for oh, so a, they sleep in a group. Yep, yep, they just sleep in a group, and then they wake up. And then when they wake up, they then they get into breeding, and you'll have like breeding modes and stuff like that. And then... Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it, you know. And then then they'll go on their own way, you know. During the summer months, they're not together at all. Have a snake ever eaten an animal, and then the animal lived and cl- cut open the snake and got out? Well, I don't know of any that have lived, but there have been like e- there's actually a famous picture you can pull this up to an alli- a Burmese python eats alligator and explodes out of the al- so the, the the alligator explodes out of the Burmese oh, python. What the fuck are y'all doing, dude? <laughs> If you, oh you my! Find, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Hi, man. Boy, you're gonna have to clear your cash when you when we're done here. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, y'all gotta yeah, chill so there, with yeah. all of this shit, man. So you can see the second picture here, oh, right yeah. over. Not that one. The neck. That one right there. That's actually an alligator that's busting out of a snake's gun, you know, stomach. So, yeah, it's crazy, right? Nature, man. It's it's awesome. It fucking scares me so much, man. I think that's the thing that scares me sometimes about dying is going back and becoming part of something that I'm scared of. Right. Yeah, you could be a snake. Who knows, man? Or even as a part, you know, being becoming like a cell in a snake. It really does. That's the thing I think that scares me the most about mm-hmm. them is like, is that they are closer to whatever the source of like life is that I, I feel like yeah. then I, as humans we are. You've evolved that way. But maybe, maybe, and I'm no expert in this, Buddhism or whatever, but maybe you, you keep moving forward, not backwards. Yeah. The next life you're supposed to be one step closer to the enlightenment, right? I don't yeah, know. no, that you could be right, good. but no, good, no, right? I think you're right. I, it's a, that, I think that it's like, but I just wonder which way is the enlightenment going? It's like yeah. I don't know what the scale is. Yeah, you think you start off at the the beginning and then end up a single cell amoeba somewhere? Yeah, like that's what I don't know. It's like I don't know which way. Yeah. And which way you're passing? Like, are you yeah. headed this way? Are you yeah. just whatever you did in this ter- in this yeah. uh, you know, this space in the firmament, does that choose wherever you're going to be at next kind of? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I choose to think that it'll be better next time. Yeah. If there's a next time. That's a really good outlook, I think. Um, yeah. I'm an optimist. Are you? Yeah. You seem like an optimist, man. Yeah. That's why not? Be really nice. Uh, you're not? I would like to be, I think. You'd I like think I am. I just think I'm just like a burnt out optimist. Gotcha. Not even drug induced, just like, oh God. It's been so, yeah. I've been thinking optimistic for so long, I'm tired of thinking it yeah. that way anymore. Yeah. yeah. Understood. And you're always battling the dark arts, I feel like. And right. So you're like, man, you want to see more of the light, you know? Yeah. I think that's one thing that's neat about, what's well, one thing that's neat about life in general is if you get off of like a lot of like the news and the BS and Twitter and a lot of that, yeah. you get back to the things that are more important. And yeah. There is a lot of joy and a lot more optimism. Yeah. yeah I don't I don't watch the news, man. I, I'm, I like boycotted it. Yeah. About two years ago, I was like, I'm done. Don't yeah. need that in my life anymore. Just, you know, negativity breeds negativity, man. Yeah. It's like that. I just want 
get rid of all the negative stuff in my life, get, you know, surround myself with positivity, you know? And that's the thing that's nice about animals, right? I mean, they, they, you get what you give, right? You give them good, you know, it's like a dog, right? If you love your dog, he's going to love you back, you know? And it's the same thing with reptiles and, and all animals for that matter. Is there a reptile that you feel, I mean, you mentioned that lizard that can love you kind of? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I, you know, and I don't know if love is the right term for a reptile. I don't know what they're thinking. I have no idea. Uh, but, but they definitely seem to have this, you know, some seem to have this really interesting bond where, you know, like I have a giant anaconda, the one I was talking, not the one that had the virgin birth, but the other female that, uh, you know, you go on her cage and she'll crawl right up to you and just like sniff you like a dog, you know? Wow. And I mean, I've had like other reptile people that have been working with reptiles for decades wow. come and sit in the cage and they're like, I can't believe this. This doesn't even make sense to me because it's like you would think a snake wants to go away from you. She actually literally wants to come over to mm. you and sniff you and sn and literally she'll as soon as you go in her enclosure. It's a gigantic enclosure. It's ten and a half by ten octagon waterfall. The whole shot and um and and you know she she loves to be in the water. You go in the water, she'll be right in there, you know, s swirling around your legs. I mean, yeah. So I think they they at least have a bond. If it, I don't know if it's love, but it's a bond for sure. Do people ever rent snakes out from you? Do you do like snake rentals? You know, I don't rent snakes, but we've worked with, we you know we've done a, a few things with like film and stuff like that where like, hey, can you bring a snake for the day or something on that lines? Um, Up in Detroit, has Kid Rock ever rented a snake from you? I, You know, I haven't met Kid Rock, uh, met Eminem uh, at, at an animal show I was doing once. Uh, Kid Rock, we just haven't crossed paths. You know, my tattooer tattoos him. So oh, uh, interesting. it's interesting that we haven't crossed paths some, at some point. But I would think he would be into reptiles. Seems like a guy that would be into reptiles, but uh, we just yeah. haven't crossed paths. But, uh, but I do have people that their main job is to rent snakes uh to to like movies and stuff like that commercials but i just don't i just don't do that you know it's something i i probably could do more if i want to but i i don't care about it that much was, was there a lot of sacrifice because if you did so much stuff it seems like with the animals was it hard to like run a family and have that yeah. at the same time or was things oh pretty gosh, manageable did it all seem no. okay no it, dude you know i mean you know just like in your career man when you're committed you're committed now all of a sudden i you know with you you're probably working constantly traveling doing all these other engagements i'm taking care of thousands of animals right you know so and, and they don't take christmas off right they don't have a holiday you know so christmas morning we are opening presents with the kids and then i'm off to the shop to to make sure everything's Ha healthy and happy and uh so it's tons of sacrifice you know i mean you know running businesses are sacrifice yeah and then a live animal business is even a giant sacrifice yeah. you know because you're always uh and then you know on my end i because i film every day you know for my vlog then now i got that i have to do every day so yeah it's a it's, it's the balance is tough you know have you ever got a crazy call somebody hit a snake or the cops or need a snake for something a man been hiding a snake something's going on Not, you ever get called in because they're like yeah. oh we know a guy yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've been called into. Uh, as a matter of fact, a real estate agent just two days ago called me and said that there was a, a snake in a house she was renting, <laughs> similar to what happened to you. Yeah. And said, "Can you come by and get this snake? I don't know what to do." So we get calls like that, or or like the local authorities will call us if they, you know, maybe someone moved out of a house and left snakes behind or reptiles behind or or stuff like that. We so we will do that. You know, it's not something that I, you know, it's part of my life or something like that. But I'm happy to help at any point I can. You know. But it's always weird. I put out about probably 20 pounds of snake repellent this morning. That smelled oh. like cinnamon, I thought, a little so bit. So that's an interesting thing, right? It's like I, I heard you say that, and and you're right. You know, like cinnamon is one, pepper is another one that people talk about. I don't think any of them work, to be honest with you. I think it makes you feel better. Right. I mean, not that I'm now I'm fake, making you feel worse, but uh, I, I'm not sure that, <laughs> that anything breaks the thing. But I, I, if I was a betting man, I think your uh, invasion is over and you're okay. not going to see a snake again. Really is there know. worth setting any kind of trap inside or anything like that to no. see if there's more snakes in there? Would they come no. and get it, like a mouse trap or something? No, 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 not, not really. I think there was... A, a guy one time made uh, the snake uh, trap thing that supposedly worked. So first off, snakes oftentimes want to be along a wall. Like mm -hmm. they don't want to be in the middle of the floor because that's dangerous, right? Yeah. You know, danger, danger. I'm in the middle of everything. So they'll like be along the walls, right? And so he actually took like a, a, a two liter Pepsi bottle that was an opening that it could get into mm. and put like a little mouse in there and it could get into it, but then wasn't smart enough to figure out how to get out of it. Interesting. You know, so that was the only snake trap I've ever seen that apparently worked, but I've never tried it. And, and, uh, you know, we don't get many snake escapes, but we get the occasional snake that escapes, you know, from a, a drawer or something like that. And, and, uh, and then we have to try to find it. 
probably you know i actually had a 19 foot snake escape once but that was my fault i left it every listen every time a snake's escape it's always my fault i've always accidentally left a, a latch undone or a lock undone and but uh and she wasn't a happy snake either so it was a lot of fun catching her have a snake ever killed its owner that you know of uh, they have, yeah, yeah, they have. It's not, it's not common, but it does happen. Uh, I think there's been about, Damn. there's probably been about five or six deaths in the United States in the last thirty years. Oh, that's not that many. So it's not many. It's not many. It's it's far less than even shark attacks, you know. Damn. So it's pretty. Now, now, you know, again, it, it happens, you know, in the wild more. In, in, in Indonesia and the Philippines, you know, big giant reticulated pythons will take people a little bit more common. I, again, I don't think like multiple per year, but it does happen. I mean, just maybe two two years ago, I remember seeing a story of a, a woman went out because like her pig was squealing, right? And uh, she went out to go f- figure out what was happening with the pig. Obviously, there was a snake there. And the next morning, they found her slippers Oh. And, uh, and and a giant snake with a huge lump in it. And they actually caught the snake, and she was inside. Oh. It. So, yeah. That, and she was deceased? Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. But that's it's a rare thing. It, it, like I said, in, the, in, in America, it's very, very rare, you know. And, again, usually it's, you know, listen, you know, that's why you shouldn't handle a big snake without someone else there. I have never, we've always had the policy, got to have two people just in case, and I've never been in danger in my entire life. Never once has a snake almost killed me. If a snake starts swallowing your friend, what do you do? What is the other, about? what are you supposed to do? So we, we have a policy, as much as I hate to say it, is that if there's ever a situation where someone's in danger, you kill the snake you know, immediately. Like, I mean, there's no second chance. You know, you can't, you can't take the risk of trying to get that snake off if it's danger mode, right? Because right. if you have a 18, we have snakes that are almost 200 pounds, you know, if that thing is, is for some reason, and we've never had it happen, but if for some reason that is, is constricting you, you don't have much time. I mean, yeah. that's going to, it's going to black you out. You know, you follow UFC. I mean, you'll put someone to sleep pretty quick, right? Damn. You can imagine a snake this big. It's going to put someone to sleep real quick, you know? And Once so you're asleep, that. will they then, do they then let go? Can they tell when you're asleep? Uh, they'll, they'll squeeze you till you're done, right? You okay. know, so they're not going to, you're not just, they'll you go can't play, deceased, yeah, probably. so you can't play dead. You know, you can't be like, wow. oh, I'll just play dead and they'll let go. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll hang on to you for 20, 30 minutes, you know, and, and then, then release. So what uh, should you do if a snake start wrapping around you? Uh, Hit it with your car keys or something? Yeah, not 99.9999% of the times when a snake is wrapping around you, it's holding on to you like it wants, like you're a tree. It's just trying not to fall. Uh, you know, it's just trying not to fall. It is, so I've like I said, I've never experienced a snake yeah. trying to kill me or anyone around me ever. Wow. So I don't know what would trigger a snake. Um, maybe it's hungry. Maybe you haven't taken care of it and haven't fed it properly. I, I'm not sure. I don't know what would trigger a snake to try to constrict you. I've never seen it, so I I, I don't think it's. I think people think it happens. Right. And even you know when people see me have a giant anaconda around my neck, they're like, "Isn't it gonna kill you?" You know, you're like, "No, it's just hanging on to me, man. It's yeah. like literally, I'm like a tree, you know, and yeah. it's it's gonna wrap around you so it doesn't fall, right? Right. Yeah, you know, it's man. not trying to kill you. Um, do you uh, is there another question that came in, Spence? Anything else we want to get to? Got almost everything. So my question is, how do you feel about like? All the hate that you get. People say you don't take care of your animals, correct, whatever. I, I don't know. Watched you for a few years. I don't know. Very interesting. It's crazy taking care of a bunch of reptiles like that. But just want to feel your opinion like on all the hate, all that shit. Sorry, it's windy out here, y'all. Gang, gang. Windy inside everywhere, man. Well, you know, why, do, why do animal people get so much you don't take care of your animals? Why is that such a common well, thing in the animal world? I think it's it's always, I think it's not just in the animal world. I think that hatred comes from success, right? You know, yeah. I mean, just like you, you have a big following, I guarantee you. There are people out there that think you're bad for whatever reason, right? Oh, yeah, and, people are mean. Yeah, and, and so, like, I can tell you this much. No one that's ever visited my place has ever said I haven't taken care of an animal. You know what I mean? It's always just the people that, like, are jealous or, like, oh, my God, this guy's got a big following. He's in, and, and it doesn't even bother me, to be honest yeah. with you, because I know, right? I don't have to prove to anybody what the deal is. Right. I know that. I mean, you can't go to a place that's better kept than ours. I mean, the animals are impeccably kept, and, um, and we have a crew that's really great so so yeah that that stuff i think that just comes with being successful you know yeah. it comes with people following you you know when you have five people that follow you online 
it, no one cares. But when yeah. you have millions of people that follow you, you know, their voice, you know, that, that minor, that vocal minority, and they, you know, the, you, know, you know, I'm sure you get the same thing. The most crazy things get made up about me. Uh, that that's wild. I'll read something. I'll be like, what? No, we're like, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, he's you, building a Noah's Ark. Yeah. You, you know, who knows? You know, yeah, I mean, this, I, I hear yeah. all kinds of stuff, you know, it's like, and he's and, closeted. Uh, he's building a Noah's Ark. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. that's fucking insane. Yeah. You know? I, yeah. There's but all I think, kind of shit. But I think that, you know, as you know, in your position that, you know, we ch- we signed up for this, number one, right? I right. mean, no one told us to be- become social media or, or comedians or whatever. We we decided to do it. So we have to take the good with the bad. And yeah. the bad, the bad is, is loud mouse that like to, you know, have their 15 minutes of, you know, fame with the, the keyboard, you know? And, yeah. Uh, and you have to learn how to just not worry about it. It's a little bit more difficult, you know, with animals because... Because when someone hears like you're not taking care of your animals, then people are like, oh my God, he's an animal abuser. Whereas if someone's <laughs> like, you know, like Theo stole the, you know, Jim Gaffigan's jokes when he was, you're like, eh, whatever. It didn't matter yeah. as much. So people take that more serious. But again, I think that that's a good point. Yeah, the animal things a hot. T- it's always such a hot topic. I it think is. especially when that Joe Dirt, uh, Joe Tiger King. Yeah, yeah Tiger King. Yeah. 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 Did yeah. you ever run across that guy? I didn't know Joe, but I knew almost everyone else in the series. Wow. Yeah, I, there were almost everyone else in the series with friend of mine. So it was it was definitely a very as a matter of fact the scene if you remember the scene opens up at a reptile place if you remember and so he's at a reptile place guy named Tom Crutchfield and then all of a sudden there's a van Mm -hmm. Mark McCarthy a buddy of mine and there's a snow leopard in it Mm. and he says wow this took me on a completely different direction that series was originally supposed to be a reptile series it turned into a tiger series because he just happened to be at my friend Tom Crutchfield's place which by the way they've now filmed that reptile king I don't know what it's called I think it's going to be called Lizard King to be honest with Mm. you because there was a book called Lizard King from Brian Christie was a best and um, the guy named Ray, uh, Ray and Mike Van Ostrom were the lizard kings um, in, in their reptile people. But Tom Crutchfield also was one of the main guys. That's how that whole thing started. Was It, it was supposed to be sh- shot about wow. Ray Van Ostrom, Mike Van Ostrom, Tom Crutchfield, and a couple other guys. And it turned into Tiger King. But uh, but yeah, and, like I'm friends with Mario, the 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 guy that Scarface is. You know, I don't. Oh know, yeah. You know, the guy. He's literally the, yeah. the, the the Scarface was made after him. Mar- I've known Mario for a long time. Pretty much all the guys in the in the series I've been friends with. You know, the Myrtle Beach. You the know, Doc Safari. Antle. Doc Antle's wild. Yeah. yeah, he seems interesting. Interesting is a word for it. Yeah, yeah for see, sure, that's you know? exactly so what he sees. That he's... whole thing. I mean, listen, I don't know how they make it work, man. You know, like, like, but they do. Like, yeah. I see what they do with these animals, and I'm like, I don't know how people aren't dying. You know, yeah. but they, they got it. Oh, man. I don't know. His son isn't dead every day, and he's out there eating damn yeah. mangoes with a damn, yeah. uh, you know, snow cat or whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, but it works, man. I mean, they, they, they somehow have those animals dialed in, yeah. and it's you know, like, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I. I, I give them a lot of respect from the standpoint that they really know their stuff because no one's ever been hurt there. And they are, you're walking around with a liger that's 800 pounds or yeah, whatever, you know, go. it's like, that's crazy. I got to go over there. You should, man. Just see, I'm supposed to go to Charleston in a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll try to stop on the way. Let me know. I'll, I'll hook it up, man. That'd be I, a great I, I idea. I can help you out, man. Um, you, is it hard to support? Like, does your wife and children have other interests? Are you so reptiled in that it's ever like... Yeah hard to like uh because i find it hard in my own life i get so yeah. caught up in my own stuff that it's yeah. like man i've created so many things that are busy yeah. it's hard for me to put them down and recognize yeah. other people's interests and stuff and it's not a judgment it's just a yeah. curiosity no it's no i think you're 100 percent right i think that you know if you're doing things the way i mean this is a t- go back to the balance thing i am so unbalanced dude you're right you know yeah, i mean too. like i i work like i work like way too much i i mean you know it's hard to have other interests at all you know what i mean like like i'd love to go out and play hockey or play baseball or something like that on the weekends I, that just ain't gonna happen you know i'm too busy and uh and it's the same thing my wife is uh you know she, she's you know 24 7 you know with me so we we try we're trying you know what i mean but it's it's hard man because you've done everything you can do i feel like yeah well that's just i'd be a damn snake right well this is the thing that that's great about my life and, and same thing with yours is that I'm doing all this crazy work, but in the meantime, I'm like, you know, on a freaking island in the middle of Indonesia, you know, in a cave with, with snakes, you know, or, or I'm traveling around or, or even, even, you know, like, again, you know, just like the first time I met you, you know, I'm going to a comedy show and then going back and meeting Theo Vaughn, you know, that's what everything is. When I go to a baseball game, I'm meeting the baseball players. I'm, you know, so I, so like, 
you know, so you might work your your butt off, but at the same time, you're win- you're 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 winning because you're living an extraordinary life. Yeah, you know, even though you're working like a dog, you're like doing things that people can only dream you could do. Sitting in a room talking with Theo Vaughn for two hours or whatever, you know, it's like it's it's a blessing. But yeah, there's not a lot of balance, man. Like. You know, I'm not sitting around playing bocce ball very much. That's for sure. Yeah, it's tough, man. It is interesting. And I don't know if it goes back to something inside of me that wants to work all the time. If it goes back to a fear of being like not seen or something, I don't yeah. know. Do you know what made you, what drove, what, what oh, drives yeah. you? Have you ever thought oh, back gosh, on it? Yeah, hundred percent. It's, you know, the, the typical, you know, parents never thought you'd amount to anything. You're never going to be good enough. You're never going to be the, you know, your brother and sister are going to be more successful. And then you have that chip, you know, you're like, you're proof. I tell people all the time, I've been, I've been trying to, you know, prove to my, my dad that died 10 years ago, how good I am, you know? Yeah. And that's what it is. Right. I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I listen, I've got a lot of pathologies, right. You know, and I know them all. I've been through therapy plenty, you know, yeah. so, so I get it. You know, I'm driven because of uh, things that happened to me when I was young. But but at the same thing, you know, like I've said, it's like I'd rather be driven to do something great yeah. than be driven to do something wrong. Mm, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it, I could have, hey, that fork was in the road when I was 16, 17 years old. Oh, that tongue is split at the yeah, end, baby. Yeah, I could have went the other way and I could have been doing bad things my whole life, you know? Yeah. I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm a, I'm as, I'm an addict up to, you know, more than an addict you can imagine. Yeah. I just choose my addictions to be positive addictions and not drugs and alcohol and, and bad stuff, right? Hmm, interesting. Um, I got one last question. Do you... Uh, when you travel around the world and you go to these different cultures and stuff, is there a culture that you feel like that is most closest to nature that you get like a sense like, yeah. man, these people are right or so much closer on the cusp yeah. of of nature than maybe uh, U.S. culture or of, yeah. of our culture? Well, for me, it's always been the continent of Africa. You know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, Africans... Uh, are more in tune with animals for sure. Wow. Uh, now, you know, see, Australia it embraces animals, but Australia, you, you've been, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're very, it's like America with an right. accent, you know, really. But they, but you also, when you go to the store, there's a gummy snakes and there's, you know, there's koala bears everywhere. And, you know, I mean, they're very, em- they embrace nature. Yeah, and but, there's animal little sanctuaries and zoos yeah, all ever, over. You pull ever. off any, yeah. yeah, you pull off at a damn truck yeah. stop and there's somebody in there yeah. fucking tickling a uh yeah koala. A little koala or a little uh <laughs> nochi or whatever that little animal is waka a waka <laughs> yeah her little what is it called that smiling animal oh that's a quokka quokka yeah yeah, yeah quokka. In there t- yeah, yeah, i've got one, right, one, I've got one right here right on my arm a quokka, the happiest <laughs> yeah, animal in yeah, there yeah. but uh so uh but but i think the africans are, are you know although australians embrace wildlife they still live in homes and stuff like that africa especially if you get into the bush i mean those people i mean it's a way of life i mean they're sure they you know they've they've got lions and they've got you know leopards and they've got rhinos and and elephants living amongst them and, right and it's a it's a i love being in the bush in africa you know that's like the probably purest places i've ever been in my entire life um and and, and the people there are you know i, I went to a place called uh, uh Dektari school for bush school for kids and Damn. they would take uh they would take these kids uh, from the bush and bring them into this little camp for two weeks. And the first thing they would teach them is how to flush a toilet because oh, they had yeah. never seen running water before, wow. right? And and I was lucky enough to come in and spend some time teaching these kids about wildlife, right? And and to them, wildlife is, can be scary because uh, you wake up in the morning and you know your uncle Johnny got killed by a lion, you know, right. or whatever. So so everything and is. He like, was the breakfast chef. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, but but then you teach them that these animals can be respected, and yeah. and it, it's amazing. I mean. And, and I've never been to a, a a rural village in Africa that they aren't all smiles and aren't all like loving life, even though they have virtually nothing. And so, uh, so yeah, I think Africa is the is the place. I mean, it's a place I always get called back to, right? Mm. Like when I I want to go and 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 just feel nature. That's where you go. And and have you been to Africa? Yeah. Yes. It's a, yeah, I've had some great experience. Yeah, I've had. I, I would say similar. You look in some people's eyes there, and they, they, it looks like they go so far back. Yeah, it does. It feels like your home when you're in Africa. Mm. Yeah, that's what I always say. It's like, as a matter of fact, there's a, a great saying that says, "Once you your boot has stepped its foot in Africa, you can never get the dust off." Mm. And uh, and I think that that's a, a, a real true story. You know, it's like it's an always calling for you to come back. And I can't wait till we can do some more traveling, get back to places that I love like that. It's awesome. Where do your kids like to go? 
Uh, well, Noah is a, is a big traveler, uh, and uh, uh, my my daughter is is uh, she's more like she go to a resort, you know, something like that. she's that type of a traveler. Yeah, that's fun. Whereas Noah is more of an adventurous traveler. I think you know he over the you know he's been a lot of places, but I think over the rest of his life he'll be he'll he'll see the places I've seen, you know, and and we've been to some pretty crazy things. I mean, I've uh, uh, again, you know, some of my travels have been ridiculous you know i mean probably the craziest you know travel thing that i ever did once was i was in indonesia and uh there's this this famous uh guy named brady Barr. i don't know if you've ever heard of him nat geo guy you know like presenter you know yeah. and there's this really famous scene where he's in this cave uh in indonesia in a place called astano lar and mm -hmm. uh he he gets bit by a big reticulated python right in the gooch <laughs> right in the gooch gets him and he's in Baguana, right and and he uh he gets bit and he screams like crazy you pull him up yeah there's brady Damn. bar and, and like i said the, the the most famous thing brady ever done was get bit by a reticulated python in this thing so we had uh i was in indonesia Damn, bro. I was in Indonesia and uh, I get this, uh, literally I have a piece of loose leaf, loose leaf paper, dude, with a map, drawn, a drawn map, how to get to the cave, right? Now this cave is on an island called the Bambaju. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, and all I have is a loose leaf paper. Loose leaf paper literally says, fly from Bali to the Bambaju, drive 43 kilometers up to Astana Ular, and hike an hour down a trail to the cave. That's all I got, right? right? So I literally pack my backpack, one change of clothes. I've got some camera gear. It's me and a friend of mine. And we get on a prop plane, fly two hours off of Bali to La Bambaju, get their uh, taxi driver that we had arranged in the beginning, like not taxi, but a driver. Like he's supposed to take us there. We get there and he's like, oh no, no, I'm not going to Astana Lar. That's way too dangerous to get up into that. And I'm like, what? We, we literally just flew here, right? Yeah. So I fortunately I had a friend that was real connected in Indonesia. I call him up. He gets on the phone with him. I don't know what he tells I don't know if he threatens them, bribes him. I have no idea what happened. So finally I was like, all right, let's go. We're doing this, you know? So we drive 43 kilometers, takes us literally like four hours hours because the roads Yikes. are so bad to get up there get up there we get into this this little village called the Sanu Ular and uh, we have to get uh, passage you know for from the the elder you mm -hmm. know the chief like if we can go to the cave because it's a holy cave and um and and so so literally like you know you get up there and, and you know they probably don't see too many white people they probably yeah. seen Brady Barr was the last white person they probably saw right yeah. and so we uh, uh you know all the, the village folk are out there laughing they're smiling taking you know selfies and all this other stuff and um uh, and then they, now we got to sit down with the elders, right? And we go into this dark room about this size, and Damn. it's me and my friend. And and uh, is your friend cool? My friend's cool. Yeah. He's from California. He's cool. He's hanging out. And then I've got my translator. That was the guy that drove us here, right? He's he's going to translate for yeah. us. He's sitting next to me, and we go in this dark room. Three elders sitting here. Rest of the village behind them. Now they're all stoic, not even a smile on their face, right? And 15 minutes I hear, blah, 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 you know, they're talking back. Forth. No idea. It's what like the Survivor at the end of Survivor. Yeah. I'm like, what's, well, and you got to remember, there are still parts of Indonesia that headhunt, yeah. right? You know, so at the end of this 15 <laughs> minutes, crazy. the end of this 15 minutes, I'm not even shitting you, man. I was texting my wife, hoping that maybe it would ping off something saying, I don't know if I'm going to make it out of here alive, <laughs> right? And so at the end of this 15 minutes of go back and forth, the, uh, the, the, the lead elder, reaches back and some lady hands him a machete at that point i thought i was dead i'm like okay i'm done yeah i'm, I'm done it's over so that he gets the machete he puts it on his side everyone stands up walks out my translator is not saying shit to me you know like and i'm like what is going on you oh, know yeah. so finally he says okay i talked to the, the chief he said he will take you to the cave for like what uh, equated to like 40 bucks, right? right? I'm like, oh my, I got $40. I saved my life. I got an ask. I'm in, you know? By the way, we would have never found this cave. You, this tra It was a trail that like an hour into the bush, we would have been lost right, in yeah. 15 minutes, yeah. you know? But the, the guy took us into the, the, the cave, did this really badass ritual. He had like, he had an egg that was in a handkerchief. He like split the machete was to get uh, like off a sacred tree mm -hmm. to knock a, a branch off. Mm -hmm. And then he puts the branch down, puts the egg on top and then sings this ritual for safe passage into the, the cave oh, and so damn. we go in there and, and like the sure, craziest hardies you could ever yeah, be at yeah right and uh and so we go in there back up to my my waist no way i mean just raining bat 
poop, right? You know, and we caught some 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 snakes in there, uh, and it was a great oh, adventure, God. man. It was a great adventure, you know. So I think Noah will have those adventures in the future as well. You know, it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. I did fall into the baguano at one point, killed my camera. By the way, I had my camera slip, fell into the the, the baguano. I was covered in bat crap. Only had one change of clothes, and that was. Uh, then I had to hike an hour back up to this the thing to drive four hours back home. So. Yeah. Damn. Well, if he stays doing comedy, he won't have he'll. I mean, he'll perform at the St. Louis Funny Bone. That's a real shithole. Yeah. <laughs> so he might not have different. It might not be the same type of shithole with the bat yeah. stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be just different type of shit. Yeah. Still got to wash yourself off yeah. at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Do. yeah. Brian Barzik, man, thank you so much, dude, for coming and just yeah. spending time with me, man. I really think it's fascinating. Um, I wish I'd have, if I'd have had a snake, I'd pet one, man. I got one. Um, you want one? Did you guys really bring? I one? bring one. Yeah. You want to get it? Oh, I was just saying that. Uh, <laughs> I think you should. I think you should. If you'd be here with me, man. I'm here. I'm right. here, man. I'm right here. All right, let's get one, man. Let's see what's what's going on. And and where is this snake from, brother? All right, I'm going to start. Hang on a second. Oh, Jesus Christ. Good deal. He shouldn't have done it. So, Theo, I'm going to start small, okay? Whoa, whoa, dog. What you doing, man? Small. Come on, I'm man. Start, this is small. I'm going to start small. I've got one other snake you got to check out. But check this out. This is called a piebald ball python. Look, it's got a smiley face on it. Okay. And then it's got an upside down smiley face. Okay, so come on, man. Drama. Now, is these glasses, is this, this going to scare him? Nope, not at all. This is drama. Oh, drama well, come on, man. That dude's moving around, Bubby. No, no. Just hold your hands out like this. You're going to be good. <sighs> he's going to know I'm scared because I know I'm scared no, right now. He's not going to care. It doesn't matter. Well, what about me? It, you can be scared, but you're not going to be afraid because you're going to feel it and you're going to be like, holy cow, that's way cooler than I expected. All he right? can't bite through this, can he? He, he ain't going to bite you ever. All right. I promise you. Okay, so what's going to happen then? This is going to Can happen. I just put him on the ground? Can I put him on the table or should I put him in the air? You can put him in the ground. What if I have these bracelets? Is that going to scare him? Nope, it's not going to scare him. I don't want him scared, dude. You got it. <sighs> Let me I just touch him first. Touch him first, yeah. It doesn't okay. feel like it's not slimy. Okay, cool. So, you ready? You'll be fine. And then, yeah, all we'll right. Let's do this real quick. And then I got one other thing I'll show you. See, that's not bad, right? The thought of holding a snake is way worse than actually holding a snake. He's just chilling. Okay. Okay? Good? Mm -hmm. All right, let me show you one more. Jesus, dog. Damn, bro. I think I just had a uh, egg birth in my heart. I feel like I just had a pair of... Watch out. Oh. Damn, boy. Now, this one's got to go around your neck. Damn, bro. Come on, bro. This one's got to go around your neck, all right? This one's what? Super, super sweet. The only way you can hold, hold on, dude. I can't even hear you right now. <laughs> you have to give me at least 10 seconds, man, to chime in, man. All right, you got it. Damn, bro. You're all right. You're going to be fine. Okay, now what is that snake doing? Where is that snake from, man? This snake is a Burmese python. It's an albino Burmese python. And it's not going to do anything. It's, it's super tame. Super, I mean, this is, I mean. It seems everything. like it wants to do something. It's around, like, five-year-old kids all day long. God, dude. You ready? Yeah, now what are you going to do? You're going to put it on me, and then what do I do? Just sit just here? Just sit here, and I'll take them off when you tell me. Okay. All right. Super simple. Well, it just hold on, dog. It, 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 it just was breathing. It's just breathing. <laughs> Why can't it fucking just breathe all, real quietly, more quietly, dude? Yeah. It's, it's be breathing fine. like a damn, like it's damn. We got a V six in its neck. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. I, I got you. All right. Okay. Let's wait till it's looking away. All right. I'm gonna take it like this so it's looking away. You tell me when you're ready. Okay. And it's not gonna go up my sleeves or anything, is it? Nope. Should I pin my sleeves closed? Nope. nope. You're good. You're good. I got you. All right. Yep. Just like this. Yep. Like this, okay. and if you put this hand out like that, you can control mm -hmm. its head, and you're set. See, you did it. You proud? Yeah. You won. Can you take him? I got gotcha. you. Thank you, brother. You got it. Jesus Christ, bro. Yeah, that was like awesome, right? Fears, dude. That's what I feel. Scared, you did good, bro. man. You did good. You should be proud of yourself, man. That's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, can I try one more time with that? Yes, of course. Okay, I just want to feel. See, I, I told I you. I want to feel the fear again. I told you. I told you this is how it happens. All right. Am I good? You're good. He's just kind of cruising around. Do I hold him or anything? You're good. All right. And how do I seem? Okay. You're good. I mean, you seem a little stiff. That's fine. Well, he seems fine. He's happy. <laughs> You can move. You can breathe. You can do all that normal stuff that people do. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're grateful. <laughs> we're grateful you're here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Liquid Death or just regular death.
Okay, what is he looking at? He's still looking at the plant. Okay, good. Yeah, man, he seems, wow, I think it's just that he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Nah, he's a good guy. Trust me. I only brought good ones. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think I'm okay for today. That's good, though. Goodbye, buddy. There you go. Wow. You did good, brother. I'm I proud of you. You're powerful. See? Kinda, in a little. It's like you won. It's like you won. In You're a weird winner. way, I feel a little bit more. Yeah, like I won. Like I, just like I did something, you yeah. know? Like See? I leaned into the discomfort. Oh, jeez. No worries. It means it's his lunchtime, I'm sure. Yeah, that's uh, just in time. Just in time, I took him back. So close. Yeah, so close. Wow, man. That's amazing, dude. Yeah, it's cool, right? I mean, when you do it, it's kind of, it, it's mesmerizing, right? Oh, yeah. And that's what I told you is that people that, just like you, you know, afraid, then you do it and you're like, oh, let me do that again, man. Let me do that again. And then next thing you know, you're like really into it. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, if you were close to me, you'd be at my place every day. You'd be like, holy crap, this thing is awesome, you know? When we come up, man, I owe you a vlog. I'll come in there when we come up, and we'll yeah. do something fun, man. You have to show me around a little bit. I'll yeah, try to be it. more a little, a little bit more brave. You're, you were brave, man. You did great, yeah. dude. I feel good. It definitely makes me feel something. It makes me feel like I did something I didn't want to do a little bit, you know? Yeah, I feel a little bit more like uh, maybe I don't know if it's maybe a little bit more confidence. I think you're. I think you could see it actually. You know, I could see it in your face. You went from like terrified in the beginning to almost like, wow, this is all right. I got this, man. I got this. That's pretty awesome. You should be proud of yourself. <sighs> I'm proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here too, man. Yeah, Thanks for pleasure. boosting my pride level today, uh, guys. You, if you don't know Brian, you can check him out. He has a, a huge YouTube channel, and you can experience everything that's all about all reptiles, not just snakes, right? Yep. Right. Yeah, all reptiles, and um, he has two children, and he seems like a good guy, and we're happy he was here today. Thank you so much, bub. Hey, thanks, man. It's been awesome. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it's cool. Thanks. Where it's been blown. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground. I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all my shine